Welcome to the puzzle, bisexual transgender. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the first time I've heard that. <laughs> or uh, I've already made that. Joke. <laughs> yeah. So the input is this weird triple X bonded metal thing, <clears throat> and the output is this other weird triple X bonded metal thing, and the. Uh, two metrics were rate and area. So for rate, the interesting thing about this is that you can't remake these bonds once you've broken them. So you have to preserve this shape with the bonded metal and Quicksilver through the machine, which means that the math for what the optimal formula is is a little bit different. No uh, purifying. Right. So for, for these, that part specifically. these rate puzzles that involve metals, the, you have these two different glyphs, um, the projection glyph and the purification glyph. And depending on the order that you use them, you can get different efficiencies. So if you, uh, whenever you use a Quicksilver to promote a metal to the next level, um, you could uh, alternatively use this one with another metal of the same level. So it's as if that Quicksilver is acting like a metal of that same level when it's being used here. So the higher the metal already is when you use the Quicksilver on it, the more efficient that Quicksilver is. Um, so the goal is to only use this glyph up to a certain level and then use this one the rest of the way. But the issue is with this bond is that you can't use this glyph because it only takes unbonded metals. Uh, so this one you have to use the um, projection glyph. And like as people usually learn after first time solving Surrender Flare, you're allowed to use projection to upgrade metals that still have bonds on them. Which right. Is the only yeah. That this is possible. <laughs> yeah. If you had to unbond this completely and then bond it back together, this puzzle would be unsolvable. So if it doesn't have a hole, it works like calcification. Uh huh. Um, yeah, we're doing rate first, and yeah. So area. Um, Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> the issue with area is this weird shape. It's kind of difficult to bond it together in a way that you can slide it onto the output um, without taking up any extra area. And then also there is a secondary of um, cycles, which maybe involves some of the same purification math as rate does. It took me so long to get a layout working. Yeah. For area. Same for rate, to be honest. All right, so starting with rate, um, there, oh yeah, so the other thing about this week is that since the puzzle was a bit difficult and uh, uh, I don't know. A lot of there were a lot of uh, solutions which were sort of um, solving the puzzle and maybe a little bit optimized, but not like super optimized. So we'll probably see a bunch of those starting out here. Yeah. Are we showing, I guess, anything that loops for rate? Yeah, anything, anything that, that <laughs> anything that loops and isn't like area. I assume most area solves also loop. But I did go through. R. Yeah, I did go through all the submissions just before uh, the stream. There may be a few I was missing, but to try and separate out which ones are area versus rate, so hopefully get that. But yeah, first up is Svenja. Nice oh yeah, we got Zoom tool set up here. <laughs> so yeah, this is 96 hours. Walking R. tech. Whack. <laughs> and I guess I should explain the rate metric as well. So the idea of rate is that uh, your solution will eventually enter a steady state as long as it doesn't crash uh, or put atoms out to infinity and bring them back. But once the solution enters a steady state, uh, it outputs a certain number of products and the length of that steady state loop um, and the number of products that are outputted, is it, let's see, the number of products would be on the bottom of that. Yeah, yeah. So the length of the steady state divided by the number of uh, products that it makes in the loop is the rate. And you're trying to make that as small as possible. This one seems to be optimizing for period. It's doing everything at period eight. Mm -hmm. oh. It's only taking one input and making quite a bit of waste. So it's it's kind of, it's efficient at something, but that thing isn't aligned with the current metrics. Probably for convenience. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, this one is actually, it's just making, it seems like these uh, pairs here and then the last one it makes, it pops off, unbonds, and then puts it on both sides. Yeah. 
So it so only it has only... to worry about making these. So it's not even using purification at all. It's only projection. Nice. Yeah, this is the sort of strategy that I used in a speed solve when I wanted to just get the puzzle done as quick as possible is your goal is just build silver triplex bonded to quicksilver, which you can do with projection only and a bit of waste. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Then the question of like, and one of them you have to unbond and rebond again, which means you're doing something inefficient because that bond doesn't actually need to be triplex bond eventually. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. Making all the excess material into the silver is the way forward here, but this solution is clearly designed for something other than getting optimal rate. It's just really cool to look at. Mm -hmm. And there's there's even some extra track here that's uh, not being used. So. <laughs> it also yeah. does a uh, weird wanding tech. Using uh, a piston that never pistons. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. the Steven He's piston. Style. Arm six is the pivot wand. I think Svenja is really just going for aesthetics and power to the back. Mm -hmm. Oh, we haven't even solved like solved the puzzle. <laughs> Right, next up is from Zorflax. Highest amount of effort I'm willing to give to this puzzle. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Good start. <laughs> that jump to Critelli coming in clutch again. Oh, it's uh, like yes. one yeah. quick silver part. It's got TI bones, but then it gives up on trying to actually be TI because it's just looping instead. Uh huh. And this one is using the same sort of tactic uh, at almost the same rate, actually. Wait, where does it go? <laughs> the white stick disappears. <laughs> I... Ah, less area pain. <laughs> <laughs> Some sort of area attack, yeah. Translation only waste. <laughs> yeah. It probably speeds up the solve too, because it's it, not. Yeah, that's probably the reason. Out as much area. But yeah, this is sort of a similar idea to the last one, where it's only doing um, the projection. I guess the difference is it's making these. Uh, the other one would actually project these. Come back, <laughs> these uh, leads uh, up to the ions. Come back. <laughs> Whereas this one just leaves them bonded and swings them around in a bit. Yeah, chain. Zorflax willing to use one input as one quicksilver more often than not. Because, I mean, if you can just take another input, might as well use what you can take. Mm -hmm. How many points is thirty fifth place? Uh, I don't remember the equation. Oh, that's awesome. kind of... Zorflax is valid spending the amount of effort he feels able to spend. Mm -hmm. Everyone is valid if they're <laughs> cutting back on their commitment. Yeah. yeah. The tournament is not going to be a Oh, no, I just paused. Oh, okay. Uh, next up, we have 5381 with New Solution 1. At, uh, 5381. Yeah, slightly faster rate again. We got a rate pile up in the nineties. <laughs> this one is the first one to use a um, purification. Yeah, glyph? A purification glyph. For some reason, I can never remember the names of purification versus projection. Like, just too similar. But yeah, so this one is using a, a slightly inefficient algorithm where it's uh, it makes a how many tin. inputs to outputs? I mean, it's throwing away an elbow, so it's using I think. Seven and a seven and a quarter inputs. Yeah, something like that. So it's let's count. One, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven and yeah, a quarter. Yeah. It's it's, no, it's 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 six and a quarter, I think. Because it's no, only I pulling seven and a quarter is literally not enough, right? Or no, is it? Wait, hold on. <laughs> Six and a quarter is enough. Six and a quarter is enough. Yeah, yeah, I remember now how the calculations work. I just never worked with fractions as small as a quarter. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's pulling seven, uh, I'm pretty sure. And then it's doing this uh, project to tin and then purify uh, and then project again, which is slightly mm -hmm. inefficient because you're purifying after projection. So I mean, this it pulls quick seven, but. It's already pulled seven, then it has to pull another. Yeah, let's... To get just the last quicksilver for bonding. Two, I think he probably computed that three, seven could get you cleanly to four, the silver that you need, but then forgot, oh wait, there's also another quicksilver on the other side of the uh, thing, so I have to get 
There is a clean way to get seven, get it from uh, seven inputs seven. though. Yeah, seven, seven to one, which oh, yeah. is uh, purify all ten to copper. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Which yeah, we may be seeing that algorithm uh, in a different in section. <laughs> that is an area relevant yeah. observation. Uh -huh. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that is uh, what happened. Is uh, oh wait, like uh, I need one more to get. I this need to an work. extra quick silver. Yeah, let me just yoink <laughs> that from the next product. No, yeah. next next input. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, next up, I have one from Iggy Mo Jungle. This is a new submitter, I believe. Um, this one has a note, slightly improved cost cycles and area over my first submission of this. Probably won't have time for further optimizations, but if I did, I would try to break up ARM7 into multiple other ARMs, as it seems to be the current bottleneck. Also, I'd consider if I can change how ARM1 does stuff to conserve cycles and area. I do wonder when people are... Uh... <clears throat> I guess maybe feeling really tied to their first iteration of a solution. Because mm -hmm. when I see this, I think like local optimization on this one will almost certainly not change the placement. Although with the current neural parallel app, maybe it would. Like if you cut five from the period, this might be a place better. But mm -hmm. my thought is like, well, now you've gotten the feel for the puzzle. The second submission that you make would be a redesign, taking what you learned from this one rather than a local modification of it with one arm replaced by multiple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I approach things my first year. I, I'm glad that I made my speed solve, because like five minutes in, I was pretty sure, OK, I've done the things that this puzzle requires. I'm going to not do any of these in my optimal solution, but at least I've kind of played with the idea. Yeah, you got the idea of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And like the jank that comes with it, that is uh, getting silver and quicksilver on opposite sides of that giant ass stick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, this one's you another know, one that uses purifiers only. I didn't only. struggle with that in my rate solve because of really weird reasons. <laughs> Probably also, busy specific reasons. I yeah. have also reasons that made that not as painful, but... Uh... Yeah, I think part of the rate... like Part of what made this puzzle interesting for rate is the, solving that problem. Uh, getting the, those things on both sides of the output. And like the Quicksilver, you get at a much lower latency than the Silver, so you can stick it on at an earlier part of your pipeline and then put the Silver yeah, on could. later. I just didn't manage to. It's interesting that you have to do so much work before you purify. You have to unbond and store three Quicksilver, and then you have oh, to have something yeah. around you for that. Yeah. But I remember I, I found the image that Panic edited together uh, three <laughs> years ago now for Amalgamated Gold Ring, where it's just the guy holding so much Quicksilver spilling out of his. <laughs> <laughs> Panic, you know that seven salt image? Oh, yeah. Imagine if that's Quicksilver. That's this puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you spill Quicksilver like you spilled that salt, you'd, you'd cause deaths. <laughs> Mercury is famously poisonous. This is true. Anyway, let's hold on to a lot. Well, I mean, we're spinning clicks over here. <laughs> right, next up, we have a submission from Vorjin, Fast Food Frankenstein. 56R. Yeah, that kind of <clears throat> confirms what I had thought about. Like, okay, well, Igima Jungle would have been able to save a couple period that would have just left them in the same position. Mm -hmm. This seems like it's getting the job done a little bit more effectively. Part of it's coming from the compactness of a single projector. How many inputs to outputs? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Is it also yeah, seven? And it's seven just and it's like disposing. Is the multibonder used as a multibonder? Oh yeah, I see the silver bonds on the bottom. The beginning of it, they're only ever using the same bonder. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot of pistons in this one. I guess starting to think about cost as well. Uh, usually in the, the cost secondary rate solves, um, pistons are not seen very much. But it does make it easier to move things around. And yeah, once you get to the tightest possible output rate, then you start worrying about cost. Although I would not really fault anyone for 
using whatever tools they have available to get a better rate. It's when you're not at min rate, just mm -hmm. easier the process is, the better your solution will be. Uh, next up, we have Talair with participation points. Participation points. What's the rate? 54. 54, yeah. So only two rate. Um, One. Yeah. Oh. I love the triple projector. That's a really neat look. Okay, one input, two input, three input, four input, five input, six input, seven input. Yeah, seven inputs. The triple projector vertically arranged under the Gratelli all firing in unison makes my heart happy. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Oink. <laughs> Having one pipeline do the make it make it into a sort of iron staircase shape is uh, something that might come up yeah so one thing to notice here yeah uh, as this points out the you can take one of these inputs and turn it into an iron uh triplex bonded to a quicksilver sort of all on its own and that's on the way to a uh, silver bonded to a uh, quicksilver so doing it in its own pipeline is very it's a very convenient way to break it down and then you just put two more Quicksilver on to bring it up to silver. Yeah, it means that one of your directions is responsible for those six atoms. The other direction that you pull it is responsible for upgrading those iron to silver and also providing the last two atoms. Mm -hmm. And that's almost a 50-50 split of the work. Almost. Right. All right. <clears throat> Very close to <laughs> If you do the math, it's one off from being that. Yeah. <laughs> It's a uh, 21 plus 21 plus 1, isn't it? Yeah, 43 inputs could get you 21 going one way, 22 going the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank God I have min rate. <laughs> <laughs> you have the same rate I have, whether or not that's actually, like, I, I had some doubts at the beginning, like, that's ugly, but it's satisfyingly complete if I try to, if I think I know how yeah. the game works. I, yeah, I think I know how the game works, too. <laughs> All right, here's one from Topo Mouse called 5 plus 1. Oh, it does the... it debonds the first uh, triplex. Yeah, it allows it to keep going in the same way as before. Like, that's that's pretty nifty. Yeah, it doesn't this... have to hold up to do that debonding afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. This one also has two pipelines, it seems, uh, which is maybe the <clears throat> where the name 5 plus 1 comes ah. from. Oh yeah, top of mouse with the unusual odd one out. That's kind of... I think they've done that for a few of the other rate puzzles as well. They have an interesting approach to the game that I always appreciate. Yeah. And this one is another um, projection-only solution. It does make that side be able to be cheaper. Mm-hmm. And yeah, this one gets down to 30R. 30. Which nice. is <clears throat> starting to be in the ballpark of optimal. I think my speed solve was 32R because it was um, eight inputs to an output and it was just pulling them every four. Mm -hmm. Pulling every four is the most convenient uh, rate in period in Opus Magnum. You say that, but I was making period four track loops because that's how my brain works. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because... Uh, Grab, rotate, drop, rotate is a four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next up, <clears throat> we have a little bit of a primary pileup. Uh, let me zoom out a I bit. Have a pileup. At 16. Ah, uh, here's the eight inputs like to the output pileup. All right, so this one's by 42 Genius 42. Um, this one has a note. Took ages to get the middle section working to bring down from a mostly symmetrical 18 to a less so 16. Are there gold gilder savings? Probably, but I doubt I can easily find them without major rearrangements. Basically three pipelines, each of which uses the wasteless algorithm I worked out. For every 18 inputs drawn, eight go to the left and right pipelines respectively, each making four products. The middle area takes two inputs of every 18 and makes one product during the same time. Uh, this works out to an average of 16. I am buggered if lower rate is possible because where do you get enough material? Any faster metal promotions would leave waste, and as far as I can see, I'm drawing inputs as fast as possible. 
MVP most valued yeah. piston is the piston nearest Use the, the waste. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, there's no waste. This is a wasteless solve. I know, but like, this one projects before purifying. Right. Yeah. So this I, is. I'm a... seeing it projecting purified tin or purifying. I'm seeing yeah projected lead in the middle somewhere. So this is an example of how uh, the pure projection, like a pure projection solve, can be wasteless and pull outputs at max speed, but still not achieve the minimum rate because it's yeah. See how it's like making this tin with the quicksilver, and then uh, actually wait, it's going to even make an iron with the quicksilver. It seems to have three pipelines. Yeah. Yeah, he had said that there was a, a symmetry pair on the left and right, and then the center is doing kind of like an odd two out. Yeah, and this one's actually purifying all the way up to silver. And then... I feel like seven to one would be much easier than this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess the clearest example of how you can fall victim to this is if you have two lead and two quicksilver, which was even a custom puzzle people were playing around with this week. You can make an iron out of that by projecting each and then purifying them together, or you can make a copper out of that by purifying the leads together and then projecting the tin that comes out twice, mm -hmm. which is a, a difference of substantial amount of value <clears throat> using no waste in either case. Right. You should make sure that you're on the right side of that every time you're doing this map. I'm pretty sure the way to get like any amount of inputs to outputs without waste, I think. I haven't found any exceptions, but that seems to be... It's called the disposal. <laughs> well, I mean, apart from disposal, you can sort of strike the balance with imperfect purif ejection. Yeah, there's a range, because uh, like if you're... Maybe not for all, but yeah. like for anything I've tried, it worked out. Because like there's, there's obviously an upper limit um, for optimal, and then there's a lower limit where you're just like doing the most inefficient possible, and then... Uh, in between, there's different possibilities. Probably any possibility that you can... I don't know, it's an interesting question. Yeah, you give him a jungle, we already uh, went over yours. <clears throat> Alright, so next up at 16R, but a pretty big drop. Looks like a much more convenient 16R. <clears throat> this one's from Moraconda. Oh. I think he was talking about last minuting it and using disposal because doing it at the optimal rate was going to take too long. I didn't know she finished it. <laughs> oh, there's even a, a waste chain <laughs> of uh, wow. silver with quicksilver. <laughs> yeah, it's so this funny to get that much of it out. Funny how this is cleanly sixteen. <laughs> yeah, so this is doing kind of the thing that a lot of. Uh, optimal rate solves will do, where it pulls these alternating, debonds two quicksilver from this, and with the two quicksilver from this, gets to silver for these chains here, and then uses the rest of it in a pure ejection thing. But it is not quite doing an optimal pure ejection thing, and it makes waste. This is 740 gold, though. Yeah. And yeah, this funny waste chain. <laughs> but yeah, I think this, so. Yeah, this one I think is starting to show some of the ideas that will show up in uh, min rate solves. But yeah, since this is an attempt at min rate that didn't get there. Right. There's just also the missing piece of you wouldn't be able to actually go 50-50 with the projection and purification sides. You would need one more input yeah, to go to the left, so you need an extra arm to grab it and do a lot more work. So oh, right. It's a little more complicated than just this, but it's cleaner. Right. But we... Which also <clears throat> means you need to expand that tape loop way longer. <laughs> we do have one more at 16, so more kind of your uh, rate optimization would... Oh, hi, Rebix. Uh, Reb did finish out something. So yeah, this one has a Rejection comment. Only. Uh, the solution name is, you're finally awake. Looked like you hit your head pretty hard there. Pure ejection? Wasteless? 86 over 7? What the hell are you talking about? Let's go be irresponsible with metal promotion. 
<laughs> Thank you, Rebex. <laughs> so it seems most people have come to the conclusion that 86 over 7 is the optimal rate. Mm -hmm. Which is a awful number. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is the... I guess this is the best rate you can get with uh, projection only. I believe that's true because it takes eight inputs to make enough silver. Mm -hmm. Although you can you can get twenty one quicksilver from the input, and twenty twenty quicksilver makes the output, right? Yeah, I think it's twenty quicksilver. Four of the each of the silver. Oh yeah, you you output. can get six point. You can get twelve points. Six 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 with mm. perfect with projection only. There yeah, I guess the it. the fact that this is making waste means that it's not actually because you could be doing something with this waste. So yeah, it's throwing away the quicksilver. Yeah, this is the best rate that you can get while keeping your rate a multiple of four. <laughs> that one I can say is true. Yeah, uh, period four. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's period four. There's still a triplex in the bond. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Because there's still a triplex, you can't really use the waste. Oh, well, it the bonds that. <laughs> yeah, in so theory, you can, you can get 12.6667. 12, 12. Like, it's paying. Projection <laughs> only. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. All right, so next up we do have twelve point two nine. There was a plan at some point. <laughs> twelve point two nine. Oh. Off. <laughs> hey, it's we're the... there. We're at, we're at min, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Number twenty five. We're at min. Cool. This is the most expensive min rate. Nice. Mm -hmm. This oh, community is pretty pretty poggers. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with how many people got a min rate solve. Uh, it actually during playtesting it I'm took me. I'm expecting that at this point. <laughs> took me a couple tries. The first uh, attempt sort of didn't line up properly, so I had to make another one using mm, what I had learned from the first one. But yeah, this it one... looks like every single input goes to the exact same debonder in this solution, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm also still waiting now that I'm staring at that hex arm and tract arm in the top left, if they're ever used. Yeah, how does this do the plus one? Oh. Doing something. So one thing you have to strike is the balance between how many yeah, times there's the pins project and how many times. Go? Like, I, I'm pretty sure that it's... Uh, is it just dealt with at, with at the bottom, the extra lead? And it's, three it's extra not doing, it's not doing a half and half sort of thing. It's just kind of shoving everything through the same machinery and kind of brute forcing that the ratio works out in the end, which... Which means that it's kind of hard to interpret from the perspective of someone who's watched for the haves and haves. Yeah. It's interesting, yeah, that it's... The thing is... I'm... Oh, yeah, okay, so there's a small delay where it didn't pull one up here. So yeah, it's like... Yeah, that one put the lead down to the bottom. Yeah. But, yeah, that was an extra lead quicksilver to the bottom, but two quicksilvers still have to go up top. Right. So yeah, it's handling the odd one out within the same general system as the other stuff. So it's kind of hard to see. <laughs> I, I'm remembering now that during Ravari's rage, I think the very first min rate solve was extremely instructive. Oh yeah, because it was oh, yeah, that was due to being this was the absolute opposite. But at this point, now we're looking at a solve that was not very deliberately laid out to make it clear what's happening as our introduction to min rate, and that's just a little unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, we'll probably be getting to those. 
eventually. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm kind of wanting to talk about now that we're at min rate the balance between when you purify and when you project tin to iron. Four go to iron, three, three go to tin. Four of them get purified out of seven outputs, and three of them get projected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not very straightforward to observe that happening in this song because it's under a mess of arms. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's keep going. We might find some more illustrative ones. This one's from Kazian. Uh, I guess let me read. Yo, Kazian has been right. Yeah, I've been offered a princely premium to produce the highest possible conversion ratio. I asked several times whether this request had any cost considerations, and emphasized the very marginal gains and the steep increase in the cost of the cabinet, but the specifications were very clear. Highest possible conversion ratio. Spare no expense. Well, okay then. One cannot plead ignorance on the price tag. Alchemist Kazian, you still not a brick. Biggie, here's your solve that you wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this method of organizing the input output like this is really cool. The outputs really desolate with themselves nicely. If you ignore the top and bottom. <clears throat> and it also like takes that one extra input out and like sends it off to the side. Yeah, and you can see how the extra input is integrated into this pipeline yeah. where it's like one extra pair here and then two quicksilvers bonded onto the bottom. Yeah, conceptually this is really clean. The actual pure projection trickery going on in the bottom right is going to answer all the questions of how do you get the, the right number of metals and the right number of quicksilvers out of it. But as as far as like how do you design a solution like this? This is a really good one to look at. It's a beautiful yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Kazan is improving pretty quickly. And yeah. Oh, he's lamenting that there's a, a hex arm that is being helped by a pair of arms on a hexagonal track because it doesn't get the right things at the right times. Uh, oh yeah, handling the Quicksilver in this uh, puzzle was definitely one of the hardest parts of rate because it sort of comes in at a certain rate that's not really what you need. <laughs> So, yeah, you get like three extra quicksilver for every lead you need. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to like buffer it somehow and then like you have to manage throw that it buffer. somewhere. Yeah. Um, oh, we should move uh, the view screen a little bit up and to the right because the output mechanism is covered up by the faces and the Discord text. Oh, yeah. Here, let me uh, zoom out a bit even. So it's unbonded at the same time as the silver is bonded onto it. So that's how the arm allows it to move it to output. The unbonder is hiding underneath. The, uh, the pair of silvers next to the product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very clean unbonding. You know, if we're going by still not a brick, you have really done an excellent job with what the Opus Magnum community refers to it as. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, naming, for saying still not a brick, this is very brick-like. <laughs> right. Next up is Matter Monkey. 1140. Uh, just like two years ago, I successfully brute forced min rate. At least I really hope 86 over 7 is min rate. This will probably lose badly on secondary, though. And it's not in last place. 23rd. It's really compact. I'm surprised that you can. I mean, it says 260 area because of a huge sweep of the trier, but mm -hmm. all the machinery yeah. is kind of densely packed. Mine spreads out a lot. Yeah, and this one very nicely illustrates the odd one out as well, uh, where it's alternating. I see the quicksilver storage. Here, 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 here. <laughs> yes. Um, and then every forty-three, uh, it pulls one here, sends the lead into the purification machine, purification machine, stores the quicksilver to be bonded on the output. I solve my Quicksilver storage problems by doing a handoff over disposal, which is not picked up on the first several times. Mm -hmm. There is a good use for disposal in um, rate solutions, even when you're not making waste, just to allow your steady state to get initialized with less on the board. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of that. <laughs> that would have been smart. <clears throat> and yeah, optimal uh, purification, you're always purifying your lead. Um, but sometimes you project tin, sometimes you project iron. I'll adjust for sulfur rate. 
Yeah. Oh, nice. Next they up. Talk about how they don't have Quicksilver storage problems. 1095. Tweedledee. I can afford this okay. Um, so this, again, is a 21, 21, 1 uh, pipeline solve. Here we see this interesting hex arm thing, um, which I think is a motif that will show up again, where the um, trip up bonded Quicksilver and Metal is moved around this hex arm, and then the Quicksilver is unbonded and uh, projected oh. in that path. Very efficient way to handle that half of the pipeline. It That's does look really good. <laughs> I think I'd probably... I, I targeted fewer projectors rather than fewer arms. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of trade-offs because projectors cost the same as an arm. Right. But this looks really cool. And it's making this interesting bonded... Uh, I don't know what you call it. Clip of... Uh, Outputs or partial outputs here. And yeah, there also seems to be something with the disposal on this one too. Let's see. Yeah, it's oh, going it's away the first, in the first three. Uh -huh. And yeah, since it's rate, it doesn't matter if you waste at the beginning, uh, as long as you get to a steady state where you're not wasting anything. So using the disposal in the beginning can really help the pressure from building up of Quicksilver. All right, next up we have... 995 already. RPO, yeah. RPO. Oh wow, this one's very compact. <clears throat> yeah, this is impressive to get min rate this compact. And I guess that just means you're solving a lot of the problems in the middle instead of explicitly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the output is being built close to the place where you're outputting it, so you don't have to swing the piece around. Um, oh yeah, this one has a note. Uh, that feeling when you optimize for aspect ratio, but find a tiny shave afterwards, and now title is unoptimized. Whatever, it's uh, infiniary. <laughs> RPO wasn't submitting every week for a while, but I'm glad to see him back, right? Mm-hmm. This one also is interesting because it's uh, promoting up to iron before unbonding anything from this. It does the That's first fair. part of the that promotion, and then it, it does the next part over here, which I think helps a lot with area because it lets you do this stuff over here and not all at once in the same spot. But yeah, I guess this one was optimized for aspect ratio. So as, yeah. as square as you can get it. Probably zoom in one more notch and it was probably still fit. Yeah. Barely. Although the next one I'll probably have to zoom out again. Mm -hmm. Alright, next up we got Mr. Puzzle. 980. Zoom out a bit. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm amazed that I don't know. I thought 980 would have been a good cost. I guess I don't know how closely packed all the costs below me are, but like, I do know Rivari's rage went down another 200. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. Does this this has a slower rate than Rivari's rage, and uh, well, basically all the rate puzzles we've had, though. Yeah, because so, this is so taking its time to get anything besides <laughs> the very minimum happening. Oh, yeah, there's so <laughs> you you save money by passing the input over this way so uh, uh panic you should speed click to hex the cratelli so how do i do watch that other uh alt. hold hold alt and left hold click alt. on the cratelli probably zoom mod messes it up zoom in then <laughs> it is running at alt click speed it's just slow There we go. There we oh, go. Okay. So yeah, so we have a the latency is delayed seven hundred and forty one cycles, so I can pass Yikes. an input over like that cheap cheaper than 
That was the cheapest way I could get it over. <laughs> that does probably save gold versus the way I did it in my solution, which was I kind of had a you pass the butter arm that moves products back around close to the input so that I could do my odd one out over there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like these hex over here. I just did here. sneaky inserts. The way I dealt with it is debond slowly, do sneaky inserts, don't use that much space. Yeah, I think I had a vision similar to Mr. Puzzle of how big an optimal rate solution should be. And so mine is cheap for how big it is, but it is still probably bigger than a good solution. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This one's also interesting because it has the purifiers in two very different places. Oh, huh. It passes the tin over. I guess the idea is that it's either passing two tin or one iron? Yep. Conditionally? Yeah, and then... um. Yeah, so then it's either you pass two tin or one iron, but then in then the other station turns two tin into iron. So then, like, there's a small middle portion of the process where the two pipelines are different, but then everything before and after yeah, that is the same. Mm -hmm. The four extra, no, there's only three extra quicks over coming from the top. That gives three iron. Well, the, yeah, the quick glass iron getting the quicksilver from. The, there's a couple more quicksilver bonded onto the um, uh, brick here. There's there's three, I think. Two to get the iron to a uh, silver, and then one to be the last quicksilver that gets bonded to the output down here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, very interesting way of breaking it down. And I think <clears throat> for raid, it's often good to sort of make things uniform like that. Where you can handle both cases with the same mechanisms. So. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Transcendental Guy. Nine sixty-five. Zoom in a bit here. Their name is a transcendental number here, but the <laughs> solution is decidedly rational. Yeah. So the <laughs> comment is: Unfortunately, it is impossible to make a two times three plus pi, pi rate machine in time. So here is a machine that uses. 22 over 7 as a rational inferior approximation of pi. I love it. That's cool. Because, <laughs> yeah, it is a over 7, so you can get the optimal rate with that approximation. 22 yeah. over 7 happens to be the right for our correct promotion. <laughs> <laughs> was that, that intentional? Was funny. Right, true. The oh, rate that. where it's displayed is 3.14. And this one, I guess, makes this, uh, since the other part of the machine didn't catch up in time, it leaves this oh, yeah. waste here forever. That happens. And yeah, this is another 21 plus 21 plus 1 type solve, which has one path where it brings this up to and iron. That seems to be most of them. Yeah. Because you can cleanly do everything else at period 4 and then spend a bunch of stuff, extra time on the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess what I found out is that you can make an output every 12 if one in every seven outputs has a lead in place of its silver. Mm. And so I made that. And then I had an odd one out pipeline that stole the output that wouldn't go in the glyph, combined it with an input, turned that silver, turned that lead into silver and put it back. I'm seeing all of these where they're just integrating the odd one out into the machinery instead of letting it create an output and do surgery. Mm -hmm. Put that silver back where it came from also help me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next up we have Cuckoo52. 950. We're getting the pileups. The hell is this? <laughs> 1,292 instructions. <laughs> it's got some lag. <laughs> Does it encode everything into the stick? <laughs> or is this just like this long as a joke? <laughs> I am... <laughs> wow, okay, that works. <laughs> so, yeah, it's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, it actually yeah. has to be that long. <laughs> it's extruding this giant stick, unbonding That's it. That's calculated at 86 over 7. And then it just keeps swinging it just in front of this. It's a little <laughs> Amazing. bit... Nerve wracking to watch it go. Maybe, again. maybe, 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 maybe. <laughs> panic, panic, gift this. 
I'm gonna see it. <laughs> this is very on brand for Cuckoo, Cuckoo 52. Just so, a so really like, cool, bizarre. This is a software, this is a software uh, Zoom mod doesn't even do justice. We need to get this. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I guess it's doing all the projection on this side, and then... Yeah, all the pure... Oh no, it does a little bit more projection over here. But all the projection uh, I mean, on if, these if things... If you're putting lead through the pipes, you can't just purify on the other side, right? You need to then project after eventually. Right, right. It does the pure projection on this side. The other side is just building those silvers. Right, yeah, it's like one half. Silvers. It's the... Um, Triplex bonded yeah. half is done on that side, and the non triplex bonded half is done on this side. Interesting way to split the work, yeah. but it works. <laughs> split the work and put a Grand Canyon between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this, this was not necessary. The song would work fine without this, but uh, we do appreciate it. And yeah, sorry for the lag. Uh, it's probably going to be a theme of this stream. Both categories do have some. Large yeah. instruction solves. Yeah. One for LCM issues, one for 12p issues. Mm -hmm. At least I assume it's 12p issues, you madman. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next up is my solve. Merged solution. Yeah, it's because the Somebody puzzle name used to be different. <laughs> 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 Basically, yeah, the puzzle file name changed, so I had to use the merge tool to update the. Oh, you use the merge tool to... Okay. Yeah. I'm still used to using Fire Edit for that. Mm. Merge tool makes a lot of sense and it's probably easier. Yeah, you just like drag in the empty solution from the new one yeah. and then, yeah. But yeah, this one, uh, I solved it. This was like my second attempt. I got it working and second attempt seems to be a game. <laughs> There's a little bit of a bodge for the last output because it has to like pivot this out of the way because otherwise there's a collision. Uh, so there's an arm oh, that only exists right? to pivot. Oh, that arm, okay. That good arm, it's whatever this is. I, I can't read the number on it, but... The arm next to the curtail. Yeah, see, it pivots there because there's some swing here. It, swing, it has to swing the silver around the other way to avoid collisions in here. Anyways, yeah, <clears throat> that's my playtest solve. I do hope butter arm becomes part of rate nomenclature. <laughs> butter arm. <laughs> Overclock. Oh, that's pretty. Uh, what are these minus signs on the track name? <laughs> uh, the, the instruction tape here is staring at me with angry eyes. Yeah. Are we sure this isn't a Zorflax? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the note is double the tape to correct the trap loop, track loop and remove two auxiliary arms. Programming this thing is such a fresh experience for me. Trashed one solve and learnt a lot. Yeah, here you can see the odd one out uh, going up here for a little bit and then coming back down in. Oh wow, yeah, I can see. That it's managing to reintegrate the quicksilver bonded part of the odd one out directly. Puts it back in. Yeah. Nice. That's kind of similar to Kazian Solve uh, in a way where it has a uniform way of handling these bonded pairs. So it just takes the quicksilver off and then puts it into the same pipeline. I found track loops to not be that efficient, though, in terms of cost. Mm -hmm. And also LCM issues. <laughs> okay, next up we have a somewhat unique solution by Hello Jasper. Also A85, okay. Yeah, so this one wins on instructions. Ratio of 43 to 7. Top pipeline takes 21 inputs and constructs the triplex bonded structure. The middle pipeline takes 14 inputs to project the triplex bonded structure into oh. silver and sends its lead to the left pipeline. The left pipeline does the ugly ratio stuff to optimally pure project the extra silver and provide the extra quicksilver. So this one's 21 plus 14 plus 8. Interesting. Instead of 22 plus 22 plus 1. And you can see that uh, this... 21 plus 21 plus 1? Yeah, yeah, 21 plus 1. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can see that this entire 
outputs Quicksilver is being used on this spine. And it's doing one, two, one, two, one, out, one, two, one, two, one, out, one, two, one. And then there's an extra out there. But yeah. the main cadence is one, two, one, two, one, out. So it's instead of using two thirds of basically half, it's using all of the uh, 14 that come down here. And then it can have an eight pipeline on this side, which is less odd one out than just one. And this saves over the previous one on instructions. Yeah. Yeah. No track yeah. Loop. It's never programmed for any LCMs because everything here is able to reset cleanly after it's using the track loop. Mm -hmm. I like how this track also imitates the output shape. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> nice. That was no, a theme that that awesome. notes. Did, did you read those notes or did you read? something different uh i did Actually, yeah yeah was, yeah i did i did read the notes yeah okay i wasn't sure because i didn't hear it as the notes gotcha yeah i just read them at the beginning does right mode spawner get used i think it doesn't <laughs> yeah <laughs> 10 gold does that matter we can just remove it and see yeah. if it runs just press the press the lead. <laughs> yeah, that bonder is not necessary. Oopsie, ten gold. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. Let's see if it mattered. <laughs> ten does ten gold matter? Ten gold. It does not. It does not. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, username void. With a fifteen gold shave. Very interesting shape going on here. I like it. I like bonding and this together. Oh. <laughs> that speaks to me. Oh, we got the squiggly track again. Mm -hmm. This one also doesn't have tape loops. Yeah, <clears throat> this one's a loop, but it's not a, that kind of loop. But yeah, the, the most of the outputs or most of the inputs that are pulled go into this whirlwind here, and then periodically one will be taken out by arm twelve here. Oh, they go through the same pipeline. Nice. Yeah, when you bond two inputs together, you can get every four for a double input that all travels in the same direction, which I like. Mm -hmm. And they're not project. Yeah, and they're not projecting everything. Some of them stay led. Right, and then go up to the top. Yeah. Clever. Next up we have Ebonov at 850. Reduce, reuse, rebuild. Very is this? tall solution. Ebonov. <clears throat> uh huh. It does that last one. It projects that last one last. Oh yeah, interesting. Does all of the projection on that last uh, atom after over it here. Be, after it's bonded. That makes sense. And yeah, it has three purifiers here. All yep. three of them. Kind of expensive. Yeah. Yeah, both projectors and purifiers are 20G, so same as an arm. It's not that expensive, but an extra one is uh, somewhat relevant. It's a bit uglier than 12.29, right? It's uh... a... Yeah, repeating it's, decimal. It's That's yeah, kind of 86 That's over 7. By seven. Yeah, 86 over 7. Is the fraction. Hey, panic because of the way Omsum works. If someone was slightly suboptimal rate, but it was still a uh, ceiling of 12.29 if you work 5.01s, I think <laughs> okay, it, 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 uh, so the simulator itself outputs two integers, which are the um, top and bottom of the yeah. fraction. But the I'm not sure because the actual ranking is done by auto hotkey and it, I think it would count them as the same. 
at least Probably with the current that. setup. But By I mean, having a longer number. <laughs> if if someone did that, then it, uh, we would fix it. <laughs> but until yeah. someone does that, it's there's no reason to. Keep yeah, it. there's no real reason to. But I'm just amused at the idea of a solution <laughs> that has waste and still has memory. Right. It just makes a lead like, <laughs> a slow lead. I mean, you thing. could like do something like. Uh some weird wacky number that gets really close to 6 point, uh, six point one something outputs. I mean, you could do 1,229 outputs for 10,000 cycles. Right. But that's yeah, like, could. yeah, that, yeah. That, I mean, that's the thing, right? It's like but hundreds. Then you're programming so. 10,000 cycles for a joke. Just yeah, 10,000 cycles for <laughs> however many arms this is. Uh, that would not, I mean, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm not condoning <laughs> this and I don't think anyone would do it. But it's just like a is this a fundamental limitation of the way we're doing things? Yeah, it's not fundamental because yeah, it's if we do it, do that, we'll just fix the AHK. Yeah, it could be tracked as a ratio the whole way through. Um and then it's like how big the integer can be and it's just how much work you want to do to to track it precisely. But this seems you to work to well enough. You have to protect against the nerdiest of the nerds. It's going to be difficult. <laughs> yeah, but the, the simulator itself is fine, because it is, is, as long as the integers are less than, like, uh, 2 billion or whatever the limit of a signed integer is. Yeah, OMSIM only outputs integers, so with width, with stuff like width, you have to divide by uh, 2. Right. Partially for this reason, because I don't want to have to deal with floating point, like, someone being like, aha, like... I've found some way that two floating point numbers are the same, even though the metric is actually slightly different. Anyways, <clears throat> next solution at 835. 835 by Andrej K. I wonder how cheap this goes. Any predictions? <laughs> I guessed in my notes that it was going to be at least 100G cheaper than mine, and mine might be soon. Uh, mm. Mine also might be soon. Um, in this case, the two decimals is just because it looks nice on the screen. Uh, yeah. And the auto hotkey. It's actually saved as a. It's saved as a fraction. Yeah, the auto hotkey is like uses the same data for display and comparison and everything. So. I really like the arm that has room to make an entire hex swing at length two in the middle of the solution, and mm -hmm. it does so <laughs> to sort of buffer out Quicksilver when the new input hits the pipes. Mm -hmm. Nice. How does the new swing input hit the pipes? Ah, it's bonded onto stuff, and that's how it gets into the middle. A very cool way of kind of incidentally bringing it along. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're coming along with me. <laughs> You're my new friend now. We're getting some tacos later. I, I don't get that reference. <laughs> but yeah, this is kind of like TI-ish tech. Um, almost. Like bringing stuff along with a chain that moves along. And I also like how it sort of bonds onto the output here. It's like a wandish thing. Yeah, both of the weird edge attachments outside of the core of triplex bonds are done really elegantly. One just provides the first piece of each output with the extra put silver, and then the silver hex arm helps finish them all off. And next up, we have Biggie Mac. Oh, oh next, yeah. Fuck, I beat Biggie by <laughs> instructions. <laughs> oh, you're both 810. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, mine is um 28p because I have a forearm track loop that I thought was worth it. So yeah, another one? very oh, interesting one. bonding shape here. So it's doing all of the oh. uh, this half of the pipeline, making this ring thing. Uh, that output is a long way away. But yeah, the comment. Yeah, the much. reason that this ended up feeling like, ah, I mean, I'm committing to this idea, but it's not a good one because I have to move the output so far, and then I have to do yeah. a purification and a projection over in a totally separate slow pipeline up at the top. Yeah, it's like like surgery kind of, where it's removing the uh, 
lead. Yeah, and... I literally was doing odd run out surgery, which is not cheap, but I felt like the number ended up being low enough that I had to just be okay with it because mm -hmm. area I wanted to spend some of the time on too. So this is why I called it Good Bones Tired Execution. It's just, I think if I, I got a second redesign, <clears throat> I might have a much lower cost, but I did not want to give it that time. Mm -hmm. can see how, why you were complaining about implementation issues. Yeah, both the, um, the disposal, handoff, fixover, and the odd one out are tighter than I would like them to be, and they cause some issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess also in the note, the tri-arms are probably downgradable if I stare at it longer. Over here. Yeah, that's a tri-arm track loop. Mine has one track loop, and it works just fine within one loop. No LCM issues because I got spare instructions. Mm -hmm. When I was almost done with this, I thought I could have it under 800. And then I kept having to add just like one more track so that that arm can reach out one other more track so that it can reach over there too. And that like the weird partial diamond track up the top with the odd one out arm is a bit of a extravagance. Honestly, just the whole plan to do surgery has set me back several gold, probably on the order of hundreds. Mm -hmm. I think I did, uh, my first solve was about 960 gold, and I shaved it down to 810. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is my first solve. I never really wanted to start another one because I thought, I don't have enough time for a second of these and an area. Right. Well, I mean, it was the same solve for me, but uh, it's just uh, local optimization shaves. But yeah, tertiary yeah, shaves to OMG, it's a bist. this framed properly. Commentator pile up. Yeah. Commentator pile up. <laughs> oh, I really like how the arms can alternate which direction they go to debond it when it wouldn't otherwise debond. That's a good, that's a good thing. <laughs> that, that was originally an extra arm. I was like, wait a minute. The track shape allows me to use the same arm. Mm -hmm. Oh, like where it's- They just go in the opposite direction and when they, during the two like the two instruction pause, they uh, swap places to again to re get rid of LCM issues because <laughs> they only move an odd number of times. So I used the spare extra two instructions to push them back into their original spots. Nice. Yeah, this uh, I think kind of speaks to a more general powerful tool in Opus Magnum, where you can have arms that have interchangeable ideas that they can perform. Mm -hmm. Especially in like cost secondary stuff like this, you can use the same yeah, arms exactly. for two things. This is the sort of place where those sort of ideas thrive. Mm -hmm. And yeah, quite a lot of Quicksilver being stored over here as well. Yeah, I could probably save arm 13. <laughs> Which one is that? Uh, it's the small hex arm. Oh, yeah, yeah. That one's there for convenience. And it's like putting it on this track that has this other arm on it. It's kind of uh, anxiety inducing. Oh no, that arm is like once every 86 cycles, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and it like, there's a two cycle pause, right? It goes on the track during that two cycle pause to insert the extra lead. Mm -hmm. A lot of things like depend on that two cycle pause. Arm 16 is also arm 16 is is also only on a track just to dodge arm 17. It doesn't need to be on a track. Mm -hmm. And uh, without waste, I don't think I need the rightmost arm, the uh, leftmost arm. Oh, this one 21. Yeah. Arm 20 on the bottom can just be on a track. I see. So shaves here and there, predicting a. Uh, 700 or so, yeah, mm. same prediction as Biggie. 700, that's the number. I put that as a stretch goal, but also some of the compactness here really has me thinking that it might go lower by a little bit more than that. Like, if it's sub 600, I'll be shocked, but that doesn't feel out of the question right now with what I know. I feel like the most efficient thing here is the silver staircase. Rest of it is kind of botched together to work with it. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we got- I also like how- oh. <laughs> oh, there right. he goes. Uh, it, it, yeah, go go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to talk about how it like swings past the Quicksilver. Oh, in. I see. 
Eight hundred with a piston. Damn. <laughs> But yeah, this is 10 gold drop to Cavalier. Nice. And yeah, we have a piston. Is piston. that a single hex arm that does two different uh, Quicksilver drops? Uh, I which think one? it is. The upper of the two hex arms in the bottom right is oh, yeah. capable of delivering two different Quicksilver while it rotates. That's actually so powerful I didn't notice. And I'm sad that I didn't notice. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, this pattern of having two uh, hex arms here is something that I think... Yeah, Mr. Puzzle had uh, something like it earlier, too. I think we were too zoomed out in Mr. Puzzles for me to notice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this, it, this pair of arms can pretty much do this entire half of the pipeline, taking this input to a bonded pair of iron and quicksilver. I just watched it reintegrate the lead into the purification pipeline, and that was done really slickly. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I think there's so much more freedom in the purification pipeline that I discounted when I committed to surgery. You can get away with that if you're not making it fed by a track loop. Mm -hmm. Hex arms do exist for basically this exact purpose. Yeah, hex arms are strong. I went back and looked at Fulmination Solves, lots of them use hex arms. <laughs> My favorite hex arm example was Brookie and um, Amalgamated Gold Ring, where I kind of figured out, okay, yeah, hex arms are, are worth paying attention to. Yeah, they're a cheap way to store a bunch of quicksilver. And other stuff. Right. And it's just like, yeah, you can use them to uh, manage latency, like have something going around a hex arm to make it take longer. You can have the hex arm doing multiple things. But yeah, cool stuff. Now we've got a 15 gold drop to Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is ninth place, so we're in top 10. Uh -huh. 15 gold drop at this level is quite a bit. Mm hmm. And yeah, this one is using only a single purifier. The every two loop down at the bottom looks really, or not every two, every four loop down at the bottom looks really tight because there are arms acting on both the odd and even cycles. Mm hmm. Yeah, like this uh, Quicksilver delivery arm. Yeah, I guess it makes. Yeah, single the... purifier is theoretically possible. This is, I think, not the first solution that pulled it off, but we didn't call it out on the previous solution to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it required a lot of arms to man it, so I didn't think it was yeah. necessarily a gold save. Yeah, and it's only the cost of an arm, so it's not uh, that big, but it is cool to pull it off with just one. And yeah, this one you can definitely see the sort of breakdown where it's bu building this whole spine down here with uh, one full input and then two thirds of the other input and delivering the bonded quicksilver and lead up here. And then there's the odd one out that gets pulled from time to time. This does the RPO solve thing of bonds or it projects to iron before unbonding anything. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, the full shape gets projected. Another interesting thing this one does is it uses uh, all the quicksilver from the odd one out as the final quicksilver in here so it's like uh three from here and four from this oh, pipeline yeah. but it means that it doesn't have to integrate the quicksilver into this side of the equation at all uh, yeah it, it seems a lot more difficult yeah and then it just has to deliver the one lead in here uh which yeah it means that there's one arm with a very clear set of rolls of four quicksilver left one lead right mm -hmm. All right, now we've got a 30 gold drop. Holy. <laughs> to John John, spending all the budget on projection glyphs. I see. It's 
This is a cool way of doing it where it bonds these things together and then unbonds the quicks over here. Oh hey, it's a silver staircase, but more efficient. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a silver staircase with a few extra steps that it never has to touch. I'm curious how the initialization on that doesn't bite later. Is there a false grab of some sort? Uh, for which thing? So the arm that in the bottom the right waist. that sets aside the waist has uh -huh. to do something to not grab it. Yeah, there's a false grab. Ah, uh, yeah. So the second time it would not be trying to throw the entire stick off to the right because that would crash. Right. Yeah, I guess because it doesn't have a track to move it, it has to do something like a false grab. And I really like the this Critelli zone over here where it puts the odd one out. Nice. Oh, that is pretty. <laughs> I wonder if we'll see more of these silver staircases. I think Fiesta mentioned a silver staircase for theirs, which uh, I would not be surprised if Fiesta was one of the top three. And they're very strong. And Rate yeah. was one of their best metrics when they were even still getting up to speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one Great also cost. has a disposal here that um, I guess if this bond doesn't happen or so, or maybe this arm didn't start yet. Something causes things to get thrown into this disposal early on. If the purification pipeline hasn't reached yet. I assume arm 15 just starts late. Yeah. Yeah. Since purification takes latency, Quicksilver does not. Mm -hmm. I like that triangle track. That triangle track allows that arm to do everything it needs to do. Mm hmm. All right, next up we have a 20 gold drop. Oh, we're still getting big drops. Can Imagine making a better raid solve than anyone else we've seen so far and referring to it as procrastinating on area. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. This one makes uh, three. Oh, wow, that is a outlets. lot of. <laughs> We have lots of hex arms going on here. That's a lot of waste. If you're going to have an arm for the purpose of setting aside unfinished products, make yeah, it, might as well make it, it set aside a bunch of them. It's worth, it's worth its money better there. Mm -hmm. I solved that issue by having the other, having that arm also do something else, but that works too. <laughs> this one has two purifiers. And I'm trying to see where it integrates the extra lead. It's that triangle track arm, which it doesn't really struggle to integrate. It just sets it on the right side so that that little arm doesn't have to move it again. Yeah, that makes total sense. The odd one out here is cleanly integrated. Mm. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> that odd one out swing is very Height. Even when you're procrastinating area, you have to solve in a very small space. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I guess this one also just uses the uh, quicksilver from the odd one out as the extra quicksilver. All right, next up we have a test stall from Haxton. Two use oh, disposal, nice. very compact. Haxton making a solid test stall, wow. That doesn't seem like much news to me. <laughs> He's been making very solid test stalls. Yeah, I mean, that's not out of character. I just am surprised that 7.30 existed before the puzzle even saw the public. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting how it sends the quicksilver on the bottom left. I like how the uh, output delivery arm, because it's period 12-ish, has enough time to do some really complicated maneuver to get the thing flipped around and bond, mm -hmm. using the same bonder as the silver for the quicksilver on the other side. Mm -hmm.
Oh yeah, this uh, t this was submitted after the puzzle started, right, Haxton? Or was it before? I don't actually uh, remember. Oh, this was as a competitor, like as the same time scale as a competitor. Mm -hmm. Still can't be counted as a competitor, I assume. Yeah, he no. did see the puzzle ahead of time. Yeah, I assume so. It's funny to see a playtester being so high up on the leaderboards. <laughs> I mean, we have Shadow Cluster and Arius. <laughs> I mean, like, on the total score leaderboard. Right, Action yeah. has played every puzzle so far. Yeah. Shadow Actually, Cluster's like, match I don't track. care, I don't care, I don't care. Ooh, Aria, I don't care, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a big shout-outs to Haxton for all the playtesting and stuff. Very much appreciated. He said he doesn't have anything for Week 7 as of the puzzle release, though. Yeah, I mean, uh, some changes to week seven so he did do a playtest of the original version all right next up at number six spiritual shampoo seven ten ten that's a hundred hey this is where i predicted min would be and spiritual shampoo also predicted that his solve would have min i think we're both wrong but it's cool to have that be aligned There so yeah, spiritual shadows Fibonacci streak. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, rip. And yeah, this is uh, the comment is with chain thumbs up. And yeah, this one leans hard into the chain uh, technique. Oh yeah. One thing I really like is this bonder uh, unbonder uh, bonder thing here. At first, I didn't understand what it was doing because it unbonds and then bonds at the exact same spot. But. Uh, there's actually a triplex bond here, so it has to turn it into a normal bond. Ah. It legitimately needs to untriplex the bond. <laughs> which which means that this solve like you untriplex the triplex 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 bond. bond. Yeah, this would be minus 40g if the product had another triplex here, which is kind of uh, wild to me. What the fuck's it untriplexes your bond? <laughs> It holds off on unbonding the one that it uses and eventually on triplexes. So I'm wondering if it could reuse that anyway. I like that single arm on the bottom that does a full rotate. Oh no, it can't reuse the debonder because then it would also debond every section that it outputs. It, it's making a second use of the fact that there is two different rotation points for the width chain. One of them doesn't, and one of them does hit the debonder that makes product. Right, yeah. So it's using the same mechanism to not unbond that Quicksilver as it is to unbond the products. Yeah, there's like these pivots, this pivot, and then this swing. So there's like three different possible rotations this chain can have. Does this go cheaper than Ravari's Rage? <laughs> Ravari's oh, Rage. 590, right? Uh, uh something like yeah, it was, it was sub 600. Then. Amalgamated Gold Ring was 700 at time of results, and then Jin Yu found 10 gold more and got a 690s because nice. Mm, we might beat that then. Well, <clears throat> number five, Bambi. We, we and beat we, at the results at tournament. <laughs> we are sub 600 gold. Sub 700. Or sub 700, gold. sorry. Freaked me out for a second. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Oh, you just dropped 105. <laughs> yeah, this one just looks super simple. Wow. Like, it's using like a single purifier oh. with only two extra arms. Mm -hmm. How does it manage? The, the metal delivery arm is so clean. And yeah, this one also has a uniform thing for the two inputs that aren't the odd one out. The delivery the same one unbonder. also does some work. And wow, this... this looks so much more approachable than what I was going for, let alone cheaper. <laughs> like, if I had this in my head when I started trying to program, this would have been a lot easier of a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how the good solutions make it look easy. Yeah. That's just right in general. But yeah, the fact that the first catalyst action at the top. Yeah. 
Yeah, Who needs pivots? Line, it's got though. rotates. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it reuses that um, projector in Bondra. That's really cool, too. Uh -huh. And yeah, the way that the extra pieces slide in here is really cool, too, where um, it just like pushes in this Quicksilver into the same stream, and it just sort of slides past. It's kind of hard to even see what's going on. Yeah, I noticed it when it pushed the one with the lead on it. Mm-hmm. Because that actually got debonded and required the hex arm to catch up. But when it's just pushing the one without it, hex arm doesn't care. Right. And the rest of them, like, the triangle track on the output arm is the one that makes it so that two pushes in rapid succession doesn't crash the unbonder. Yeah, it's just clean. This is just mm -hmm. so clean. It's like, yeah, like what I was saying before with making everything handled in a uniform way, this solution accomplishes that very well. It's like all, uh, I guess, 42 inputs that go this way are handled in a uniform way with the same unbonding and uh, projection machinery. And then the odd one out input is put into this stream so that this stream can be handled in a uniform way. Um, and the Quicksilver, there's this like buffer here. So the extra Quicksilver is just stays on the field here and gets unbonded here. Uh, isn't a problem. Yeah, very nice uh, number five. Yeah, this is still number five. <laughs> now we have a, okay. a tertiary drop, yeah, to Fiesta Sol. <clears throat> so yeah, here we have these hex tracks. Oh yeah, so this one has a note. I originally conceptualized this puzzle as a wasteful seven to one recipe where the waste could be used in an odd out pipeline to eventually make an additional product. I had a significant breakthrough, though, when I changed concept slightly. This puzzle could also be thought of as a 6 to 1 recipe where every product is one atom short, and a single extra input provides enough material to complete seven such almost products. This concept is visible in the final solve. It uses mostly straightforward single pipeline construction with two arms, 7 and 8, creating and applying the necessary buffer. My favorite elements are arms 1 to 5, building and breaking a width style stick very efficiently, and the funny timings on arms 13 and 14 late in the tape that avoid overloading the final silver projector once the buffer runs out. I do like, this has a lot of the ideas we've seen shared earlier, but then it's just much less fluff in the middle. Mm -hmm. Like it has the beautiful pair of tri arms to take two different projections. And it has the switch option, debonder, silver staircase. But then everything that's in the middle and upper right of the solution looks like it is a sum solve, not even a, a fast solve. Mm -hmm. Right, because the pure projection doesn't really have to be done that fast, really. Which, yeah, I guess if you can treat the part of it that like, you find two or three good ideas to simplify the fast part, the rest is a sum solve. Now you've got people like Good by Galaxy in the top three. <laughs> oh, yeah, he is in the top three. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching him in the chat being like, yeah, he seemed confident, and now he's also very clearly top three. <laughs> also, this the swing here, check this out. It's like... Very it fits. cool looking swing there. Oh yeah. Just like rotate and cadence with the hex arm and you won't get any crashes. Mm -hmm. And this hex arm sort of naturally brings it along here so you don't have to swing it that much. I guess you still need an arm there, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, congrats on number four. And now we have number three, Goodbye Galaxy, the silver ratio. Uh, oh, wow. This gold, gold and it just covered one placement. Oh, wow. The top two are very far ahead. Or at least the top three are very far ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a 40 gold drop. That's right. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I guess we're still getting the big drops. <laughs> Big wheel on the left creates the triplex spine. Big wheel on the right manages the stragglers. The top section deals with the annoying 43rd input using only 60 gold. Arm 11 pauses for dramatic effect. Let's see where arm 11 is, this one. Arm 12 has collisions turned off. That's this one. I guess because it's able to move through all this mess. 
Uh, <laughs> arms 14 and 15, I have no idea what they're doing, but they're getting the job done. Uh, that's 14... Assume, yeah, it's 14 and 15 here. Yeah, arm 14 in particular is doing a lot of stuff. It's like moving atoms back and forth on the uh, purifier. It's moving atoms into the projector and bonding to the product. Also, I see we have arm 1 and 2 again. Yes, this uh, hex arm. That's maelstrom. a very smart way to do, do the double projection. Uh, oh yeah, and arms 16 and 17 are in a slapping fight. 16, 17. Ah, that's a good way of wording it. <laughs> I like the way it looked, and it does seem like a, calling that a slappy fight is valid. <laughs> they both do they the both same do sort that. of swing against each other. I'm surprised it doesn't crash. They do wander, similar to Haxton's, but they're in a, a bit of a tighter solution, so there's less handoffs needed, so it saves a bunch of gold over Haxton's. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so now, uh, yeah, congrats on number three, Goodbye Galaxy. And another huge drop to Starfish at 600. Starfish? Damn. Congrats. congrats. 610. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> so, so doing that. at the beginning. Doing that that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of uh, setup here. I see. I guess I'll re read the note in the meantime. I built this solve around the left giant hex arm. It was just too efficient of a way to get a copper triplex quicksilver. So yeah, yeah. very familiar <laughs> setup. Uh, it will be interesting to see how many other solves also use a similar setup. Technical aside, when grabbing the input for the third injection pipeline, I needed the gap of the plus two cycles to line up with when purification arms or purification arms reset, as they needed the extra time. The single arm responsible for the grab could not have debonded and moved all the quicksilver out of the way in time for the lead injection, thus resulting in the extra long setup latency at the start of the solve. Hmm. That makes sense. Also, I really like that there's that triangle, mega triangle track that mm -hmm. loads the purifier and does all the necessary debonds. Right, there's right. only one purifier. Yeah, these very interesting track shapes. That That's two arms on the same kind of track that I needed to put four arms on because they rotated and that there's an extravagant instruction that you need to undo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Starfish really uh, redeemed, I think, probably the more disappointing cabinet performance last puzzle when they're like, yeah, I was pinged in to join the cabinet, but I wasn't, my mind wasn't in it yet. But this is really strong. This is a solid effort. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I guess we have the usual for the first place. <laughs> well, yeah, no, yeah, and it's got the hex well, arms. Not the too. usual for Ray, but the usual for Opus Magnum. <laughs> and yep, Penapig with an even bigger it's drop. All right, I five fifty. <laughs> it is cheaper so than Opus Ray. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> it's twelve R, right? That's the name of the time. Yeah, there's 550. that one input that's like that's even tighter than Caliaresis's uh, 86 cycle handling. That is in just the size of an input. <laughs> well, as far as tournament rate puzzles, I think this is the cheapest we've ever seen, and it's on a puzzle that I did not expect to be cheapest. Yeah. I figured it might be cheaper because, you know, it's 12 rate, it's not 8. <laughs> But yeah, we have a but single... I thought the descent assembling would be contributing to a lot of the cost, but these people found efficient disassembly methods. Right. But yeah, it's using one unbonder here, one uh, purifier, a couple hex arms to move things around. Um... I can see a lot of the like the combined work done by certain arms is combinations that I wouldn't have ever thought to combine into one action, or into one arm. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the pivot being done on two of the three spine pieces gives it enough time on the third one to then also move it into position for the next action. Ah, uh, yeah. And period reduce the delivery arms. Like it's just, it found the place that all the work should happen. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, just geometrically, the fact that it's putting all this this way, all the like purif ejection this way, and putting the spine this way, so it can use arms 10 and 11 um, to get it all the way over to this side, <clears throat> and in place to be bonded with the silver and outputted. Uh, and then 10 is also being used to move this forward, as you said. And yeah, just this like the simplest possible way you can think of to project these, where it's pulling every two quicksilvers here, just with two arms, like the you know your standard moving at every two with two arms like this. I love how also the timing issues where you sometimes want to pair or project faster than every four up in the very top are handled by a second arm that then also can do disposal conditionals because now you have too many arms for the job and that can now be disposal. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many places where like, yeah, you can just move a little bit of work onto another arm and then suddenly open up another option that makes significant progress on the puzzle. Pentapig is so good. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard I, oh, for no. me. It's winner of tournaments is good at game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, it's hard to even like see how this sol uh, saves so much gold from previous solves. Like it's just doing the same things, but sharing work between arms, I guess. <clears throat> arm fourteen. Oh, this one on the triangle track. Yeah, I guess arm fourteen is doing quite a bit, huh? It's moving these quicksilvers up, moving this quicksilver down, oh, moving that wow, tin over, moving that tin up. Moving that tin over and up. <laughs> There's a seven atom pocket where it unbonds the input and manages to store tin. And that little seven atom pocket is so clutch. <laughs> I guess it's eight atoms because there's one extra corner. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this one's also doing the thing where all of the uh, Quicksilver from the odd one out is being used just here. So it doesn't have to put it somewhere else, like over here in the pipeline. We really managed as a community to perfect the sigmoid secondary. <laughs> like, it started out with some big drops, and then there was a big span of tiny drops. And then by the highest scoring competitors, they were really big drops again. Yeah. It's I it, it's kind of wild really like I did not expect that to happen. <laughs> you you kind of get rid of the sigmoid top end when you get everyone to share information, but <laughs> this community has not reached the point where everyone knows everything yet because there's still some very strong like kind of show you what it's like and how it works submissions like this one. Mm -hmm. And I feel like rate or like uh, RG is kind of similar to some and that there's like a feeling of it being good or not. And I think this showed that like the top few solves really have that feeling of wow, this is like really tightly put together. Um, there's not a lot of like stuff that you see and you're like, hmm, maybe that could be better, maybe that track isn't necessary, uh, that kind of thing. Where it's like you really there's nothing here you can see that's like not being put to good use. As Goodbye Galaxy says, RG is fast some, yeah. It's like a similar sort of thing. There's a six placement gap from Pentapig to Caliaresis, which may shake up the global standings yet again. Mm -hmm. I think I'm probably going to be locked into fifth. I can't see catching anyone in the top four, and those who are behind me, uh, I think Rebix and Mr. Puzzle weren't as high placed either this time. Mm -hmm. the, the global standings for the end of the tournament are becoming more solid. Right, yeah. <clears throat> and there's only two weeks left after this, uh, week seven and week eight, so... All right, well, <clears throat> congrats to uh, Goodbye Galaxy, number three, Starfish, number two, Penapig, number one, uh, and everyone else who submitted for rate. So let's go on to area now next. Load up the area list and find the first area solve here. There are definitely more submitters for rate than area. Okay, here we go. So the first one is another one from 5381. 
The comment is, even if I wasn't going to get top 20, I still want to at least try to optimize for the metrics, so I saved a lot of area by replacing the waste chain with a disposal system. So this is similar to uh, 5381's uh, other solve, but it uses a disposal. Oh, I see, yeah, some some basic area savings from not chaining waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we can probably get rid of the zoom. We have this slightly modified... Uh, what is this thing called? Speed uh, changer? I, I call it the speed tray. The speed tray. Slightly modified speed tray that uses buttons instead of a slider so that it works better with the zoom tool. Yeah, let me turn this to normal. So yeah, that's, uh, I guess, starting at 123 area. Yeah, so 12 products. We can already see the uh, fun that we're in for with area. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, as I mentioned in the Discord, the 12 products thing was really just me being annoyed at, because there's uh, seven products that you need to make to loop in rate. So... That was kind of spoiler content, but most people who cared probably got it anyways, or knows <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, most most people had uh, max rate anyway, so it probably wasn't. Or know that ma like the yeah, competitive yeah. people all know what max rate is. Yeah, everyone who was going for max rate got it. I think it, except min, right? or yeah, yeah, min, min, right, sorry, right, but... except uh, probably uh, forty two genes, forty two. So sorry about yeah. that, but yeah. So anyway, yeah, the twelve p uh, for area. I was like, oh, it'll be fine. People just make an area solve the same as they would for six p, and it'll just loop, and it'll be fine. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see how that turned out. Um, anyways, next up we have 7T Storm, the Area 59 solution. <clears throat> so, I guess talking more about Area, the general thing for Area is at least the beginning is like figuring out a algorithm that works well, that's wasteless, but also swing. doesn't like give you a ton of Quicksilver and stuff that you have to deal with. So you'll see a lot of algorithms that are not doing the optimal pure projection. This one has extra Quicksilver. I think. Yeah, the algorithm I found for, to do 1P is to purify all 10 to, uh, purify all 10 to copper. Yeah, you take seven inputs, every lead always becomes 10. And then the ones that have to keep their bonds project the whole way, the others start purifying at 10, and then you just don't have any extra. Mm -hmm. I also had an algorithm for 13 to 2, but it doesn't fit because uh, it requires purifying lead, and that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured reducing the input count didn't actually buy me any cycles with my layout. My layout probably wasn't good enough, but it did seem like it was kind of stretched to its limit, making one out of seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. All right, next up we have Vorjin. 53. It's a sort of a height-ish solve. Uh, this is doing projector or projection only. With a disposal. Projection only a disposal. I wonder how many will see that at the minimum for that. So yeah, using disposal makes area uh, quite a bit less annoying, but it's a pretty big glyph, so... Yeah. And yeah, I may not let all area solutions run to the end. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, especially when they go up to five digits. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can watch this one for a little bit. Uh, next up we have Redstone Paradox at 48 area. Remember to slow it down first. Good call. Um, so this one's also projection only. <laughs> yeah, five digits. There, there are some souls with five digits. I can confirm this. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, note on this one is the fact that it was a better rate than my previous solves was an accident. Next up we have Top of Mouse at 39 area. Projection only. Extra mm -hmm. bonder. Lots of arms. But yeah, and <clears throat> you can see this one sliding the input over like this. It's the final yeah, it's movement. area conscious. Yeah. There are two ways to approach area. One of them, naive but more pleasant. Make a solve and then find out how to cut its area. The one that is a tryhard and the kind of one that people are expected to do is I make a layout, layout and then I'm bash in. your head into whether or not it works. Repeat until something works. <laughs> right, yeah. So yeah, you have to find a way to access all the glyphs, um, at least to the extent that you need to, and then also slide the intermediate pieces around and slide the final product to the output, which is usually the worst or like most constraining slide that you need to do. And I also know how to deal with all the fucking quicksilver. <laughs> right, yeah, the intermediate stuff. Uh, next up we have Guilty Bystander, built last minute. I was surprised that Pivot on cycle 222 didn't sweep more area. So this one is Are they pivoting the whole thing? We shall see. Yeah, this one is doing some sort of uh, pure projection. Oh, does that bond last? It's making it Interesting. A I thought he was going to purify the lead to tin only to dispose the tin. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, so this is the one where it puts it to ah, uh, iron and is then... Is Cortilla used? No. No, nice. So yeah, I guess that pivot happened. Um... It looked like it was moving an entire product. Do we have a Shadow Cluster submission? Uh, yes, we do. Did he? Okay, he edited this off. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. So it's pivoting it across the whole thing. And yeah, it doesn't use the Cartelli, it doesn't use anything outside the footprint. <clears throat> Alright, next we have a 9 area drop. 26. We're at 26 already. Yeah, finally wasteless. <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so this is the minimum number of glyphs that you need to solve the puzzle. And 26 is getting within a few uh, of the sort of theory min. Oh wait, interesting. The theory min with disposal is higher than this, so people, no one else used disposal. Mm -hmm. I'm a little surprised by that. Yeah, there's no like... There I mean, with dis disposal is a single arm, yeah? I think with disposal you still have a 27, though. Might be a 26. Never mind. I don't know. I think you only need a single arm for if you want disposal. But we're getting tight. So yeah, and this is the same algorithm where it makes a iron through purifi uh, purification and then projects it. Ooh. This one has excess. Yikes. <laughs> Oh yeah, it has this. So yeah, I guess it's this Does one's it two. two. Does it make thirteen to two? Let's see what it does here. Ten. It purifies lead, so it might be thirteen to two. Unless it all, unless that intermediary just always appears. In that case, then oof. <laughs> you can tell by the fact that it's not lagging that... Uh, yeah, probably not. Yeah, I like that you put the instruction count in parentheses to count, <laughs> like, 
to, to give us a heads up what we're about to be experiencing. Uh, yeah. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, this one seems to just be 2P. Okay, it's using the 2P algorithm. Yeah, which I guess is... What exactly is I have is a calculator that? somewhere, but it in involves 1 led to 10. Uh -huh. And the rest is the same. 1 led purified to 10, and ah, the rest yeah. is pretty much the same. Yeah, there's the 1 led purified to 10. Right, right, right. So yeah, it's, it's one lead purified to 10, and then the rest is just uh, um, projecting up to iron, I guess, and then using Quicksilver. The rest is uh, purifying up to copper and then projecting the rest. Oh, I see. Or, or was it iron? I think it might be iron. <clears throat> okay, next up at 26 area with a secondary drop, I have 42 genius 42. Double arms. Ooh, all the all the usable space for arms and some tracks and that's cool. No yeah, equilibriums. Yeah. yeah. Um, comment is it was worth bonding two inputs together, making the shape of the output and pushing that around first for practice to make sure I could make the output without accidentally breaking bonds or going out of the planned area. That uh, is a good idea. Because yeah, that final push um, onto the output is really the most constraining. Movement that you have. Yeah, you can kind of see. My guy is storing like 100 clips over in a 26 area solution. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a perfect 7 to 1. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I didn't struggle so much with, like, I mean, I had to place the bonder in a specific place, but it's not the last bond that was a problem. It was getting from the second last bond, getting that horsey shape to where it needs to be to make the last bond. Mm -hmm. that, that one wasn't too difficult for me. That killed the happen. only layout that I explored that would have improved on what I have. Uh, yeah, there was surprising uh, diversity of layouts for this um, with their different problems. Mm -hmm. like I only found one layout. <laughs> yeah. It probably isn't the best one, but it's what I've got. Mm -hmm. All right, next up with a. Uh, Relatively small cycles drop is uh, Bambi. Huh. It's an equilibrium. Surprise! This is faster. Does it use a faster? Does it use a more efficient pure projection algorithm? It's very close in cycles. It's like, <clears throat> um, like three hundred cycles ish or four hundred cycles ish. I think the other one, even though two arms, it was spending a lot of one of those arms to just juggle Quicksilver because of the order in which it did its things. Yeah. If you take one of the inputs, uh, if you take the input that you have the metal on before you start storing Quicksilver, you save yourself a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just less stuff to juggle around. Seven to one. Looks like it. And yeah, this one's called Schmeckendaries, so I don't know if that means Bambi uh, optimized the secondaries or didn't, but... Probably not. <laughs> it means that, like, looking at this and thinking, I think you can go lower, but I'm not going to find lower, so why would I bother going faster? <laughs> yeah. It's but, not an area anyways. Yeah, it is the fastest um, 26, though. So next up we have a 25 area by Cuckoo 22. 25. The triangle track, and now you can see the fun begins. Ah. <laughs> It's, it's got more instructions than it has cycles. Yeah, so this is indeed a 12 piece solve. <laughs> There's only one arm. Why? <laughs> yeah, so uh, one thing that can happen in area is that after you've built one product, um, you need to pull some extra stuff to do something like. Um, uh, suppress the input, or just because you have some extra stuff left over that you need to pass to the next section of your algorithm. So, I assume Cuckoo Fifty Two wanted to loop it regardless. Yeah, and of course, also there's a possibility that you can make it slightly faster by scripting it out to twelve. So, um, yeah, I noticed that I could make my solution one cycle faster <laughs> by scripting it out to twelve when I did a throughput cut that started off with a regram that could be avoided on the first. 
I did not do that scripting. <laughs> <laughs> it purifies to... Okay. And it... Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> it has to deep on the, the next input for suppression. Oh, mm -hmm. no. Oh, yeah, it has two pushes between the bonder and the output. That's actually really interesting. That bonder is two translations away from output. I just noticed. I see. Oh, wow. Which then so also means, like, yeah, you have to get rid of the two pieces on the input. Right, yeah. So I this one. Is, is right. This one has to be 12 for suppression. Watch it one more time, I guess. Go a little faster. Let's see. So yeah, it has to unbond this. <clears throat> and so it can have this... Uh, extra pocket space to use. Yeah, it does use the Gratelli. Oh, uh, yeah. Oof. <laughs> That's quite unfortunate. And yeah, it's two away, as you said. One, two. But yeah, this is our first uh, and not last 12-piece solve. But... Yeah, next up we have a pretty significant cycle drop at 25 area to whoosh, whoosh. And this one is not 12p, it's uh... I'm not sure actually it's, what p this is. It's like 6p because it's about half. Well, but it has two arms. Yeah, yeah, oh, it has, it has right. two oh, arms. Oh, right, yeah. Though so far arm 2 has been a pretty nothing burger of a, an arm. Mm, yeah, scrap pivot. <laughs> <clears throat> and yeah, I guess still yet to see which. Wait, I guess yeah. So there's one extra left over here. Yeah, it's probably three P. We'll see. What's the algorithm for three P? Don't quite know it. Yeah. Seems to be projecting a tin to iron at some point. Ah. So for the single slide, there's that, like, you know where the two equilibrium are? Mm -hmm. It is so hard to fit any glyphs in that, in those two spaces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so input can go in one of them, which is a headache. Right? And input can fit both of them, honestly. Yeah, they could. But like, that's an awful place for an input. <laughs> <laughs> also, then, then you're like in 12p land. Exactly, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't want to talk too much about my both solution and failed attempt at a better solution, but I'll get there when I get there. There's a lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll see some of them play out. Oh, Brother Mojo's uh, indicating that you can put input there without being in 12p. Oh. Nice. But yeah, <clears throat> this is actually... Chat the... asks, what's the top prize? Uh, bragging rights. No one, pay, <laughs> no one pays you anything for this. Yeah. <laughs> A free enter <laughs> Top prize pain. Yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one year, I guess it was running the tournament the next year, although that hasn't really been the pattern. I, mean, I, that. <laughs> I, I wanted the tradition to continue, and I was okay sacrificing winning because I'd already done it. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I'm like, I'm in the middle of the sigmoid. Who, who has gotten so much better than everyone else mm -hmm. back in 2019? Yeah, Pentapig was the one who broke the pattern. Pentapig uh, broke Biggie's uh, unbeaten streak. 
So yeah, that's the fastest 25. Now we're into the realm of 24 is at 21st place. Mm -hmm. It's 9,000. <laughs> it's not five digits. <laughs> yeah, that, that proves 23 exists, huh? Just because of a remark of five digit cycle counts. Mm -hmm. Who knew? <laughs> but yeah, this is a uh, 1P. Palindrome number of cycles, nice. True. I'm surprised to make the first input into copper. Huh. Ah, that's an interesting suppression technique. Oh, do you put the copper in the place of the input and then create copper from it the next time when it already is copper? Using the same programming that turned an input into copper, you can retain a copper as a copper. Oh, so it's like conditional, where it's either it can handle either an input or a copper. No, it's totally wrong because the copper is silver now. <laughs> What's the extra input doing? Uh, here we got another copper. It's best. <laughs> Suppression ice. Yeah, it does. That does seem to be. Yeah, see, we got a copper here. Now we're building the product. Yeah, this is the sort of thing I envisioned I would need to do to get 23. And uh, I did not succeed. Uh, Interesting. Nah, there's just a better place for the input. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so by conditionally... Basically, yeah, it, it uses the fact that the input can be turned into a copper. And it... Conditionally, if there's an input there, then it turns the input into a copper. Otherwise, if there's a copper there, it just grabs the copper. Um, that makes a lot of so sense. So it can suppress the input while also looping. Um, very clever strategy. And yeah, it's kind of like that copper isn't ever actually used. Uh, oh, it's just like... It's kind of like you can imagine it not really being... It's like just passed on to the next one. It's used for suppression. Right. I mean, it's not the copper that suppresses, though. I guess it eventually is. Right. But the yeah. it's not the same copper every right, time. Right, 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 right. It rotates through. <laughs> it's, it's the doctor. It comes back oh, as a new copper. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, cool stuff. Wacky that this is 21st place. Yeah. All right, next up, um, we have Fiesta. Praise be to Ooh. the one o'clock. Lag fest. <laughs> <laughs> At a cool 9,209 instructions and uh, about as many cycles. Uh, comment is, if you are reading this, I did not find 23. It looks plausible, but 24 was hard enough. The general idea in this algorithm is to use suboptimal pure projection uh, so that there's never more than one waste atom left after output. After the first product, this uh, one goes through a theoretically infinitely repeatable cycle of iron, lead, and copper waste. Sounds like seven to one. The game is indeed lagging. Yes, uh, at large numbers of instructions, the game is becomes slow. I th yeah, we, I think we, it tries to render all the instructions even if it's off screen. Yeah, that's yeah. The rendering idea. thing wasn't something that was on my radar until a while, but that's an op that's a that's an explanation for it. That's really wild because then you're rendering, oh. at, you know, pixel seventy thousand to the right. <laughs> right. And the fact that it it's slow even when the solution isn't running is kind of a hint that that might be it. Um, <clears throat> and the fact that, yes, you know, there's 9,200 instructions. Um, but yeah, Rebix says, should have been AI. I, kind of, I think I kind of agree with that. I think this might have been a cool AI puzzle. Um, certainly. Shadow cluster this. in shambles. <laughs> But I, I guess I was thinking cycles because it's like pure projection, so... Uh... Yeah, follow the precedent of Amalgamated Gold Ring, Creative Accounting, and Rivari's Rage, where there was always a cycles <laughs> area cycles. Would it be so bad if there were only six products? Yeah. It would be about half as bad, which is still pretty bad. But it's only half as bad. Mm-hmm.
But yeah, this uh, solution is using suppression, so. I feel the, if you can read this, I didn't get 23 pretty hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder which uh, shadow clusters uh, image was in <laughs> referencing, <laughs> like looks at solutions in this It was belief. probably referencing my 8,000 cycle 24 before I cut that by a pretty significant number. <laughs> I don't think it was directly referencing me, but the timing lined up pretty well for it to be calling me out. <laughs> All right, now we have uh, instructions increase, slight cycles 8, decrease oh, to Tweedledee. No. <laughs> How do you increase in two arms? I see. <laughs> Pain. Everybody thought that would be a good place for the input, apparently. <laughs> so this is kind of on the edge of what I would call watchable. I think it's a... Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're watching one input and we're out. <laughs> one output. <laughs> yeah. Um... <clears throat> and yeah, the solution name is pretty sure 12 teeing it was a waste. So this one maybe doesn't need to be 12 teed? I guess we'll see. Let me speed oh. it up a bit here. Is it doing um, like speed it up? first input <laughs> action that could be done by both by another arm or something? Like, is, is it a throughput versus latency question and not even a functional correctness? Oh, also Probably. this this projector is such an inconvenient location. It doesn't doesn't surprise me that it takes so long to get it all together. Mm -hmm. Does the game run better if you put it at a slower speed? I don't think so, no. Okay. No, it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, just slow in two ways instead of the one. <laughs> yeah, you know, this one is doing some... Uh... Neat suppression. Suppression here, so yeah, it does need to do that. Oh, it does need to be tufty. Yeah. Rip. Yep, so here's... Come on, F10, there we go. Uh, 8240. Yeah, small cycles drop. Also, Another uh, lag is best. <laughs> small instructions drop. Uh, a little less lag. I'm curious if we'll see any 23s that use the layout that I programmed that got almost all the way there on 23. Maybe not. <laughs> I doubt I it. Know. Probably the reason that the layout wouldn't work is because it couldn't work. But I didn't look for a second one afterwards because it was 3 a.m. and the two nights before, and I wanted to start week seven. <laughs> That's very fair. <laughs> I haven't touched week seven yet. Mostly because I don't have my computer on weekends, but... uh. I renamed my uh, 24, so how about that warp fuel? I just started warp fuel. <laughs> uh, John, so John, John no, not all the 24s have work. the input in this spot. I have the input somewhere different. So how about that cycle puzzle? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a lot of shuffling here. Things in the right place. Yeah. Oh, my, oh. Uh, yes, more first, pain. My first 24 was 8150 something, so I'm glad I dropped it from there. Mm -hmm. and this one's called almost 1p looping. Almost Yikes. doing a lot here. I mean, it's 8258 like instructions. So. Mm -hmm. All right, we got. Next up, another 12p. A little less laggy. A little different looking. Cavalier. Oh, wow. This is not the same. Okay, I was going to say, this is like my 23 layout, but somehow there's an extra equilibrium, but it wasn't the same at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one has the uh, purification uh, yeah, on the uses, other side. Instead of the input, it uses a track and an equilibrium. And it's somehow faster. I 
I guess the fact you can store stuff on this pure projection sort of out of the way, or the purification glyph sort of out of the way is nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's something that I felt like Soothing Self taught me to really value. Yeah, the purification is very useful for <laughs> keeping one away. of the big glyphs that you are just required to have access on in the like far corner behind the arm and just storing the least convenient atoms in it as like a, a backup register. Mm -hmm. This one does the intermediary really early. Huh. The horsey intermediary, that's what I'm going to call it now. <laughs> that's what I called it the whole time, yeah. <laughs> horsey go gallop is uh, ingrained into my vernacular forever. Thank you, Zorflex. <laughs> Oh yeah, so it's like kind of almost one P because it has, or it could almost be one P because the leftovers are one Quicksilver and then this Quicksilver bonded to a tin. So there's a chance that this could have been a conditional. Um, yeah, you could probably do what Brother Mojo did and pull an input the first time and make that. Then make your loop and then on the last start, grab the gap in the in Oh no, there's only one access point on input. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Sacrificing it for input, like access points on like everything else. Right. Yeah, this is full access to oh, everything except input. Yeah. That access point is also the point that has to be uncovered for the bond to work. So if there is a two atom piece suppressing input on the other side of it. Oh, you like probably, here. You can probably still pull off what I said then, grab on that blanked out point. Right, right. And build quotes the um, the piece that you're using to suppress. That makes sense. <clears throat> All right, another uh, relatively small cycle drop, although this one is significantly less two laggy. <laughs> yeah, with two arms. Um, I assume this is 1P. Looks like 1P. Yeah, the uh, comment is, I found only two layouts for the ambitious goal of 24. The first provided an ample carpet of glyphs and communication between pistons, excellent in all respects, with breezy cycles. But this layout was a phantom, a taunt. It does not allow the final stages of assembling the output to pass through the glyph of bedonding. The other layout was this one, cantankerous, but with a single delicate operation that allows extracting the half-formed product from its bonding site without getting debonded. I'd rather not say how many hours I spent poring over the instruction tape to cut cycles. Some of these Quicksilver proxies are hand-painted. I had to make do. Alchemist Kazian, you still not a brick. It does have a purification first, which... Makes sense because if you pull an extra input just to do projection, uh, <laughs> that's still the same amount of intermediaries on the board. Mm -hmm. There's quite Does a lot of quicksilver though. Does it really make sense? I'm not <laughs> sure. It works. Which because is great. You take four inputs and spend two quicksilver to make it a silver. Uh, you spend four. Yeah, yeah, you still end up with the same two. number of atoms stuck that's around. Still, except some there. of them are bonded together. I see. So it makes sense to do all the purification first. Mm -hmm. Well, but stuff being bonded together is also faster because it moves with other stuff. Well, yeah, but uh, sometimes uh, you don't get the luxury of having things spawn easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really feel the, huh, I have the second to last bond made, and all I need to do is get the piece that I just bonded to where it's trying to go without hitting the unbonder. Oh. <laughs> I guess that's impossible with this layout. Good thing I'm not like 800 instructions deep. I did all the last movements first in a different puzzle. I <laughs> because to. I knew that would be a problem. I tried to in my head instead of a puzzle, and I was wrong. <laughs> I did it in my head, and I verified with the puzzle. Your head probably was also better than mine. Mm, I am notoriously area oops. Fair. All right. Next up, we have Mr. Puzzle. <laughs> Metric was AGC, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Ah. <laughs> uh. yeah, this one seems. Oh wow! To be... Only two track. Yeah, that's that's AG style. Nice input position in the middle of everything. Yeah. I didn't, Easy suppression. Explore, uh, I didn't explore the I didn't explore layouts much. I found this I like I was like, hmm, let's see. 
for last bond should be this and then you do the rest of the layout <laughs> draw the rest of the owl <laughs> that last bo that bonder position is like probably going to be constant throughout all of these solutions mhm mm cuz you got the horsey and the three part because attaching anything else last is pain Doing a lot better on the uh, on the uh, frame rate metric. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a four ninety nine i single arm twenty four, so I, I I then put a second arm on the track and made that all work, and it got much faster anyway. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, this one manages to suppress the input um, without needing extra stuff, so like it just stays suppressed the whole time, basically. Yeah, it does sort of mean that you have three extra free tiles, whichever ones are not taken by the suppressing mechanism at all times, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you've got so many intermediaries, it's not hard to keep that thing suppressed if you have yeah. lots of access to it. Right, and if it's in the middle like that. There is a little bit of juggling uh, to keep it in suppressed, though, but like the yeah. horse head is up there and is like in a great spot for that, so it doesn't have to move far. Like right there, like it doesn't have to move far to do the suppression. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Next up, we have pretty small cycles drop to six thousand two hundred and eighty-five for more content. Nice. Hey, one P. Looks like it's doing some kind of uh, conditional stuff with this. Yeah, the very drop first right drop grab is certainly a one P. Uh, conditionalizing. Mm -hmm. And she said something like, I would save six cycles to not one be it. And yeah, that would not have mattered, so... When when the cycle saves is less than a tenth of a percent, you stop wanting to spend the effort. Right. How low does this is a half access have? projector. That's wild. Oh, half access. Mm, it's not the worst thing to half access. <laughs> oh yeah, my twenty three had a half access bonder. That was a big pain. Oh yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> and uh, the the half that you could access was not the half you needed to put single atoms on. So I needed to make this elaborate uh, rounding structure, yeah. and it was on me because the last. I don't know. I might have your layout. <laughs> <laughs> you might have my layout, and you might have made the last bond work somehow. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a, a nice way of doing uh, that conditional. I see. Just moves it over by one, and then grabs it. Yeah, there's kind of like this uh, secret uh, other metric, which is uh, like pain. <laughs> pain. <laughs> <laughs> And I yeah, except, instead of minimizing the amount that you stuff, you're creating this puzzle. Uh -huh. <laughs> and this, uh, that conditional stuff does a good job minimizing that one. Uh, now we have about 200 cycles off to Andrej K. This one has another centrally located input. Mm -hmm. That's a great <clears throat> input position, honestly. This was Mr. Puzzle's exact input position, but the arms are different. There's an arm above it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's two arms now, using the extra space. Neat. More arms makes it go faster. Wow. I do think that that's a good rule of thumb. Oh, I love that it's spinning the input without doing anything to it to pass stuff. Uh -huh. It's like, a, what do they call those doors? Uh, it's just the revolving doors? Yeah, revolving oh, doors. Revolving yeah. Doors. <laughs> yeah. This is a four axis input, right? Yeah, it's a four axis input. The question I know that Spiritual Shampoo has 24 because of the way he was talking about his solution. Does he break yeah. his top 10 streak, or does 24 get you into top 10 if it's fast enough? Mm. I hope it does. <laughs> Because that means guaranteed top 10 for me. <laughs> yeah, 23s. I was thinking that there would be a single digit number of them, but I don't know. I don't know how, how these people are good. Everyone's so good at this. <clears throat> well, we do have a pretty significant drop to the next solve. 
Oh no, you? don't tell me it's me. I'm so much faster. Oh, it is spiritual shampoo. Ah, oh, rip. Hey, this is the exact layout I went with. <laughs> <laughs> like exactly the same. Nice. Sharing a track is seems pretty useful. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, no, my purifier was rotated sixty degrees. That accounts for the like seventeen hundred cycles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm I'm in really clever company with the layout I decided to program, but unfortunately, breaking the top ten streak in week six, the only player to be consistent top ten. Yeah, unfortunate. Oh wait, I just noticed that <laughs> Spiritual Shampoo said they would be really mad if they got twelfth and not thirteenth. <laughs> well, but guess what we have. <clears throat> sorry to say. Well, he broke his he broke his streak. Earlier. Yeah, the Fibonacci wait, streak. Uh, right. Anyway, yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, the comment on this is Shadow Cluster and Neutrar, please show me 23A. Neutrar hasn't appeared yet, right? Yeah. I think just, so since this is the exact layout I went with, I can observe how different the programming is. Mm -hmm. A lot of the processes here, like where he decides to store things, I store everything on the far right, and he stores everything on the left, and the left is causing a lot of shuffling. Then I can avoid. Mm -hmm. I will say that when you're programming something that loops, twelve uh, P makes you feel better about every single cycle saved in the loop. Like every single every single rate saved is like twelve cycles. Yeah, like, I was like oh, that was four cycles. That's like almost fifty. That was like four instructions. Oh, I, saved that I, I saved five. That's like sixty cycles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even though if it was six p, it would be lower, but the exact same impact. Yeah, you know I mean, six, it's, it's cool to have yeah. the hundreds of digits more of your effort. Uh -huh. <clears throat> All right, and if the middle server was gold. Would the puzzle be more or less painful? Uh, I think it would be different for rate. Yeah, I mean, of course. Yeah, yeah. There's a relatively small range of uh, like choices that work if you want to have the sort of gimmick where you're um, projecting and purifying at like different levels for the bonded versus unbonded. But I'm not sure changing a single gold would affect that. Yeah, I feel like you, you managed to make something interesting, which is something I was struggling to come up with when trying to think of metal triplex gimmicks. Hmm. Like where there is, a, there is a threshold that persists and is interesting to try to hit. Yeah. Funny how it was probably more interesting because of Shadow Cluster suggesting area. <laughs> yeah, the original one that I had was kind of, kind of boring. Uh, so that caused me to reevaluate it. It was like just, there was just one... Um, there was like basically you were just like promoting one output and then there was another second output and you could do them in like two separate pipelines it wasn't as good so yeah having to make it this, this monster was nice yeah yeah i like this monster one thing i guess about the area or the uh, rate that i think would be interesting if this kind of gimmick is done again is like having different patterns of the triplex bonds where it's not just the same thing three times uh yeah and then you have to like decide how much of each one you need to make and, and that kind of thing. So that would certainly complicate things. <laughs> but this is the first time it appeared. So. Yeah, so it's probably good it's not um like too crazy. But yeah, so next up we do have a pretty uh, significant drop to the 3876. The uh, big Yeah, I didn't even make top 10. Yeah, same layout, just almost where I choose to store things is different. Some mm -hmm. of the juggling is improved, but this, ah. Okay, yes. so, so not, yeah. not top 10 with a fast 24. My 23 was one bond away from working. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what I wrote in my notes. Yeah, I'll read the notes. Uh, 23 seems, seems out of reach, if it is possible at all. Among 24s, I don't feel like this is a particularly nice layout, but I struggled to find any other that would work. Initially, I programmed this with one arm on the track, which is over 8,000 cycles inefficiently. Then around 6,000, I got the hang of the process and wrote it from scratch. 
The second arm required that I solve the fi final bonding sequence all over again, which with much higher difficulty. Triumph there brings me under 4,000, which feels good enough. Not even going to bother with a trivial minus 1c for 12p. Thank you. Uh, if I'm wrong, <laughs> and 23 is the obvious min that a dozen people hit, well, that's tourney 2023 for Biggie, the area main. Not quite a dozen. And it sounds like in chat there's at least one more faster 24. Uh, yeah. There are... Yeah. Not just one. All right. One. Good job yeah, to the 23 is it. If I see my layout that I worked with come up in 23, I will call that out too because I, I did spend some time. I want it, I want it to be recognized if possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I guess up next is Goodbye Galaxy. Microwave leftovers. With a... Uh, this one has been 12. <laughs> oh, it's on five. So yeah, different layout. Um, note is hopefully there are easier ways to assemble this. I ended up with different leftover atoms after each product, which made this especially annoying to program. Uh. At the beginning of the fourth product, I use inefficient pure projection to force the remainders into an earlier configuration, hence the title Microwave Leftovers. Putting this on a 3P loop, which necessarily crashes after 12, because I can't oh, return okay. to the initial state. Uh, a true competitor would code out the whole thing for each plate of leftovers, but I'm stubbornly playing on vanilla, which makes that prohibitively cumbersome. And on top of all that, I'm probably not even at mid. It's very similar to my arm positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this debonder position really makes it so you don't have to worry about getting one partial to the uh, other spot it needs to be. Kind of have my input in a different position, but the arms are in the same place. Yeah, I think putting the debonder where the projector is, is a trap. It seems like that's a nice central location for input to go somewhere besides where it is here. But that is what blocks you from moving the pieces around to make the last bond. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's also kind of cool how it's able to uh, swing this across with like a three arm swing, which it does earlier in the solution. I don't know if it's going to do it again. But... Yeah, there, did it again. Oh yeah, this layout allows for uh, two, three long swings, one for arm one and one for arm two. Mm -hmm. It's pretty neat to get stuff wherever you want. Cross-country skiing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, now we have um, our last 24. Three arm non looping. A winter oh, round. yeah. When <laughs> Winter called that out in the chat. I'm like, time to show with three arm 24A. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is uh, three arms you can imagine the being the fastest. Uh, notes are to okay. suppress the input and make this layout work, an extra atom must be left on board, which makes it impossible to loop without complex conditioning that makes it slower. Uh, used by edit for the first time to finish this as 12 product is required and the game become lagging when about the eighth tape is placed in game. Uh, also, I might have accidentally copied the tape a few more times. Hope the PC on stream is better than mine. It's running okay. <laughs> this is not the worst uh, one that we have. But yeah, having three arms uh, is very cool. And you can get away with the debonder there as long as you have something that can translate it back onto the product lift before it moves. Hmm. I made the horsey, and then it would just straight up rotates it. It gets away with that rotation somehow. But yeah, very clean construction. It's kind of a shame uh, that it lags so much, but... It's going to be one of the only ones that's this fast. Mm -hmm. There's no way that three arms can fit in the 23, and I don't think any of the best uh, even with two arms can fit in the 23. 
Hmm? Equal There's no there. equilibrium here. 23 has to be two arms. Right. Well, I mean, you could have a track. Yeah. Well, the mo maximum you can have is two arms. Yeah. Well, I guess so far this is optimal area minus arms. True. Yeah. Maybe, though, if we had more arms, we could get better at area minus arms. Turny one. <laughs> this uh, this might have been a good area minus arms puzzle, but I don't know. That would have been kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, let's let's look at twenty threes now. First up is Hallow Jasper. Absolute There's the program. five digits. <laughs> so. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's get the space bar going here. This one is on the edge of watchable. This is not the worst one. Uh, 12p because outputting needs an input suppression atom which requires the first output to be created with a different inefficient pure projection method than the consecutive outputs. The solve makes seven wrong bonds for the first output and nine for the consecutive outputs, two for bonding parts of the output in an otherwise inaccessible way, and five or seven to put metal on projection. So yeah, let me speed this up a bit. <laughs> Like that would matter. <laughs> well, it does. It does help a Slightly. bit. Slightly. It t it's still a slideshow, but it's making a little more progress. Extremely awkward half access projector, which doesn't seem like the worst thing in the world for the so first. half access bond. Huh? Oh, it's also half access bond. No, it's full access. That's, that's kind of it. Uh, how do you access that? Yeah, this one is an access. Oh, yeah, the left piece of the bonder is also half access. This is. Yeah, that's kind of a thing with 23. You have a half access projector and a half access bonder. <laughs> well, mine had a full access projector and a half access oh. bonder. It just didn't work. <laughs> well, at least mine had that. There's probably better ways then. So, yeah, we'll, <clears throat> we'll at least watch this to one output. Um,. Massive congratulations, though, to everyone who got 23. Hello, Jasper. Well done. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, apologies about the 12p thing, especially for those who uh, chose a layout that requires it um, or a method of construction that requires it. Because, yeah, I can imagine yeah. this is very annoying to both program and then also just like validating it in the game. <laughs> you have to wait so long. Uh, to get something you can actually submit. Honestly, by the time that you have um, gotten the projector working, like, yeah, you might have wrong bonds, but you have reduced the number of atoms on the board to eight, which then means that you have quite a lot of space to fix those wrong bonds. So it's not the worst thing in the world, even if it's slow. It's not a deal breaker for the solution in the way that I kind of thought it might be to have a terrible projector position. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is using a different method for the first output <clears throat> than the consecutive output so that it's able to get a uh, atom that can be used for suppression. Which is, I guess, this <clears throat> iron here. I wonder how if this this would probably be faster if it's the same thing but with uh, two arms, right? Presumably. Same layout but two arms. Does it actually use that space sometimes? Oh, like putting things on the other side of the track. I'm not sure. Yeah. Doesn't do that often. Uses it quite often. And the other thing about the track is that you get an extra movement that you can't do with two arms, which is the slide on the track. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the slide, yeah, horizontally. Uh, yeah, not for storage, but for movement. Jasper says it uses that movement a lot. Mm, fair. That's fair. All right. So next up, with a little less than 400 cycles drop. <laughs> and I want you to see the number in parentheses as well here. That's going to be fully unwatchable. That's more than slag area. 
I, that's three oh, seconds before no. the game responds to your actions. Oh no. So yeah, this <laughs> I I'll leave it on this slightly faster um, thing and if you can follow it then good for you <laughs> Kelly, this, is, this is the best I can do uh, so yeah the note on this I started with this layout with one arm and a track but two arms are necessary to input suppress on the last pivot this half builds X the is bonder, half <laughs> X is projection <laughs> yeah this builds the first product so that one spare quicksilver is left over for input suppression similar to uh, hello jaspers then the steady state products are wasteless here are some ASCII trees of the promotion recipes for the lone silver um I, I I don't know how to read this. Convey them via text, Panic. It is your duty. <laughs> so there's four lead uh, that are two of them, the first product, two of the lead get um, projected, two of them get purified to get three tin. Then one of the tin gets projected and two of them get purified uh, to get uh, two irons, which are then purified into copper, which is then projected into silver. Wacky. Uh, in the steady state, you have five quicksilver and four lead. Um, and so you have the same situation for the first lead turning into three tin, and the same situation turning into two iron, but then you purify the, or I mean, project the two iron into copper and then purify the silver. So hopefully the 26k instructions don't lag as much on your computer as they do on mine. Uh, unfortunately, I, uh, better, probably. <laughs> I will make it loop later with waste chaining if I have time. <clears throat> uh, yeah, the looping is probably not necessary here, but yeah, it's about to make the first product, I think. It's got its extra wow. quicksilver here. It's still got a lot of wrong bonds. It has to fix up. Fortunately, the debonder is, is full access. Yeah. yeah. It's a little hard to tell what it's doing, but... Very impressive work here. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. I think I got as far as... Coming up with two different routes, one for first output, one for steady state, when I thought about a 12P23, and then I thought, no, this won't even work unless I solve the bond. <laughs> yeah, get the more important achievement called solving the puzzle first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is the uh, worst of it, so. <laughs> Thankfully. Now we're past that. Um, pretty so good there's drop. one more in the top five, though. I, five thousand. Uh, no shar. A relief. Only fourteen hundred and oh, such. Put it back down to this one. <clears throat> so many cycles. Uh, unhappy face. Half access bonder. Half, half access, access everything. Yeah. Well, full mm -hmm. access debonder, necessarily. Yeah. But yeah, this has the input in the middle, so it's uh, easy to keep it suppressed, or easier. Folks out here really making three atom projector reachers in 2023. <laughs> yeah, that's like the extremely half axis projector. <clears throat> Which I guess contributes to the cycle count here. Especially when you have to remake that thing after uh, purification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess at I'm least with two that. arms, you have access to enough storage places to make it possible to execute that three atom reach. Right. So once this board gets cluttered, I would imagine a single arm would really struggle with that. There's a lot more layouts at layouts at twenty three than I imagined, though. Yeah, same. Because I found my one layout, and I was like, "Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I think that's the only one." 
still hasn't outputted yet. I think it's about a cycle a thousand, if going by the total cycle count. By the total amount of instructions, yeah, pretty much. Assuming this is 1p. Yeah. And there it there is. There it goes. Nice. So yeah, it's 1p. And we have next up at number five. OMG That's me. Metal Shuffle Hell. I know it is, took a long time to find this layout. It's jank as hell, but I believe it's min area. Indeed. There's so much quick Ooh, You only really have to have a single atom attached to your projector metal. Big improvement. Yeah, it's less half access. Yeah, except I can't. It's hard to make that intermediary to access that because it's a half axis bonder. <laughs> and you have to make attach that one single atom with that half axis bonder. <laughs> You have to attach a single atom to another single atom. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. You kind of just have to bond preserve to get it simply. Not really. I don't bond preserve. I uh. I mean, you literally have been though. Like most of the bonds that are up there are triplex bonds. That is a lot of quicksilver. Yeah, it is a lot of quicksilver. <laughs> I see how in this layout it makes a lot of sense to have your first um, several inputs go towards purification. Yeah, there we go. That's yeah, the thing I have to do to get that. <laughs> yeah, that's a little annoying. I get you. Only for one single projection. <laughs> and you have some nice uh, three arm swings here. Oh yeah, you can have you can do two three arm swings with this layout. It's pretty symmetrical. It's got good layers. <laughs> this is a four layers solve. Is it? If you're slicing from lower left to top right, there's never a slice that hits more than four X's. Lower left. Oh, yeah. True. But yeah, so yeah, that's uh, number five. Congrats, Bist, on top five. Mm -hmm. I'm next, excited to see other layouts. Next up, we have that's a big drop. Transcendent. My shapes did not matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some big drops here still. Um, I believe this will be a secondary race, but I can't go any faster than this. Transcendental guy, nice. <laughs> Pulling off min area in a tight field. Yeah, and this one also has the uh, three needed to get to the projection group. Yeah. But the same three is actually more convenient because mine couldn't do it. Projecting both sides, leaving a copper. Is that a purification copper? It might be. But <laughs> nice pivot on the single atom there. Yeah, it's oh, purification, yeah, it purification copper. Yeah, Interesting. It's missing a quick. Oh no, the quicksilver's already there. Okay. Interesting oh, shuffling needed to surgery. do trivia. Yeah. <laughs> That's how the final yeah. bond was done. There it goes, yeah. 1P. Is 22 area theoretically possible? No, because you need two arms to fully access purification, and you need to fully access purification. Mm-hmm. But consider overlap. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I think you could get way less than 22 with overlap. But you can't get 22. <clears throat> All right, so uh, yeah, congrats to Transcendental Guy for number four. 
Next up, we have another decent drop. 6,000. Two Revix. Almost couldn't do math. I tried this layout. <laughs> well, at least I imagined using this layout. So have all of these so far put the input in what I'm going to be calling the Mr. Puzzle position? <laughs> Where it's sort of in the middle of everything? Yeah. Um, I think at least the ones that have been 1P. Oh, yeah, we got John John and Penta left. Nice. It's a good week for John John. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Penta We're pick, also of course. The rates. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, this one manages to have a slightly easier time. Yeah, that's a better projection spot than projection mine. While also having um, a little bit better access. I guess it's still a half access uh, bonder, but. It's also a different purification rotation. Yeah. The access is on the correct half for single atoms, which is godsend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder why I didn't consider this to work. Weird. Because it's like, it's only a slight variation from mine. Mm -hmm. That's a nice little shuffle there. Both arms swapping places. I guess we can watch one more product to this one. I'm curious, Shadow Cluster, I'm assuming had a 23. Was the layout comparable to the layouts here, even if we don't know the cycle count because it was on a six piece all? Uh, his actually, he did submit it. Um... Oh, okay. So we'll get to see it. Yeah, we will see it. When it comes up in the standings, presumably ahead of everything we've seen so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, next up we have John John, small but slow. Not that slow. And apparently this is a 19-3 uh, ratio. Oh, interesting. Yeah, same layout as Rebix, but with different pure projection math. Uh, different rotation on the purifier. Yeah, Reddit, this layout is more inducive to... Uh, it gives more extra space. Since my projection was way out of the way, so I had to move, translate a lot more. Mm -hmm. So there was no space to do a more efficient pure projection method. Winter proposing area plus log two cycles so that their three arm 24 is currently the winner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that is an interesting idea. Or like, yeah. For this puzzle, I feel like area plus like log two instructions might be a... <laughs> Thing Space I like. chem tournaments definitely did experience uh, did experiment with sums with logs of one of the metrics. Mm -hmm. To where it's definitely something you want to improve, but it really has to be a big improvement to make up for you losing the other primary. Mm -hmm. Just to be like, don't like completely go nuts on this one. <laughs> like, have it be reasonable. I still find like primary improvements and secondary improvements and tertiary improvements more fun to optimize though. Yeah. Because you can know easily that this method is strictly better than the other and not have to try so much thing so many things. Mm -hmm. Right, there's less like searching the solution space. I see. So here we see this lead uh, being left over here. First product or the second product? Yeah, after the first product, I believe it was a tin left over. Let's see. Now it's half a tin, in a sense. Right. And now it's good. it's nineteen three, so it's gonna be nothing left. Then it starts looping. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> really good work, John John. Though that's like. I think John John showed up in the weeklies around the, the trig week. Mm -hmm. And uh, now is the top two on an area solve that was really hard and did really well on rate two. 
Yeah. But yeah, if Henda Big with a double win, that's... Oh, yeah. Also, Caliaresis with a double seventh. <laughs> that's gonna time Penta Big right back up. Yeah, because Caliaresis is in first right now in the rankings uh, pre-week six, so... And here is the third product. And then it loops. Yep. So yeah, congrats, John John, on uh, second place. <clears throat> now we have... This looks like a shadow cluster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this illusion name. Play test solve. <laughs> Take seven, copy, copy, copy. Um, I believe this is also 3P. Oh, this is a different layout. Same input debonder and bonder, but different second arm projector and purifier. Shadow Cluster managed to squeeze this much performance out of the projector that requires three atom sticks to reach. Mm -hmm. Honestly, a three atom reach is probably easier. With how like everything has half axis bonders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. You'd only really ever be bonding a two thing to a one thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> Calling out that there's track under each of those pistons. <laughs> <laughs> because cost doesn't nice really catch. matter. <laughs> Yeah, so here's a tin uh, left over. So I think this is the same algorithm as John John was using. Ah, uh, that makes sense. It's got faster pure projection. We can watch and see what's left over after the next output. And if it's. it's but Brother probably... Mojo, you don't understand in case your solve ties with a solve with a different number of arms and the same number of cycles. <laughs> Actually, we really just have to be a full tie, but you decided to put the tracks in, therefore causing yourself to lose. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's Shadow Cluster, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not like he's scoring anyways. <laughs> yeah, wasn't yeah. it last year uh, Potent Painkillers, both Shadow Cluster and Moraconda, put calcifiers on their equilibriums? <laughs> and like in Shadow Cluster's case, it was like, I'm not scoring, this is just funny. And then Markon was like, oh, I did the same. Mm -hmm. And yes, in first place, Pentapig. Damn. Oh, that's a new layout. Oh, that's a very interesting layout. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, that's so. Half -axis <laughs> the I don't believe that. How do you get away with that? Yeah. That's half axis everything that is yes. half axis. Everything that can be half axis is half axis. Um, so, yeah, the um, Why? <laughs> note is 5P steady state and special case first input. The first product and product 4 plus 5K use seven inputs projecting straight from lead. All other products use six inputs projecting from iron. This uses a lead worth of additional metal. The seven input products provide an iron for this purpose that gets slowly used up over the next four products. At various points while working on the solution, I used OM clone, FTS, IG, CTU, merge tool, and fed it. Fied it. I don't know how you pronounce that. Fied it. So you Fied. so shout out to the developers. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have lots of uh, tooling that we've been building up. It's pretty cool. And I guess this is the conclusive. It's just better pure projection. I mean, I'm also shocked that they have access debonder functions at all, but that's because he builds this four atom diamond to push the single lead that he needs onto it. Mm -hmm. Every atom that you grab to put onto a purifier has to have. <sighs> yeah, this is wild. <laughs> yeah, and I guess it kind of works too, because two of the three um, Quicksilver you can debond naturally that way. And for basically half of the inputs, that's all you need to do and all you should do. And then for the rest of them, you can build the little shape that you need.
but yeah, very cool stuff. And yeah, it's already made two products, so you can kind of feel how much faster it is. It's only 4,000 cycles for 12 products. Mm -hmm. Definitely not quite as fast as the 24 area solves, but surprisingly close, I guess within like three times, <laughs> two or three times. <laughs> I guess all the all the top three solves were within under six thousand cycles, so very cool. <clears throat> and yeah, also a surprising diversity of layouts in the top solves. Uh, wasn't really sure how that would turn out in terms of the layouts, but yeah, I'll just let this one speed through. Uh -huh. uh, 4,000 cycles ain't a lot. Yeah. And in the meantime, I will bring up the auto hotkey for showcase. Yeah. Yeah, I was remarking that uh, the input location was evidently actually forced for 23. Uh, no layouts so were able to succeed with the input layout. somewhere else. Mm. That makes sense. And I guess the uh, bonder as well, of course. And arm one is almost always in that position. Mm -hmm. Almost always. There were exceptions. Having a full axis input with one arm is pretty nice. But yeah, uh, congrats to Pentapig on first place in this difficult area puzzle. Mm -hmm. And now we can. What was your layout then, Biggie? I just posted it in Discord. Okay, let me go check it out. Spiritual Shampoo immediately responded that he tried the same and asked why we share the same brain cells. Ah, I see. <laughs> Inferior input position. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's not in the one place that works, it apparently prevents it working. <laughs> he has to also try this 23. Wow. <laughs> the people who put the input in the Mr. Puzzle place and the people who put the input in the Biggie place, they're distinguished by their area count. Mm. Yeah, and sometimes that's just what it comes down to, which layouts you try first. I tried so many layouts, and uh, that one in the end was the one where I was like, yeah, there's, if I stick the input here, uh, I don't see anything that's making this impossible. Mm -hmm. there, there was just a, a perfect spot for it, a hole made just for it. <laughs> This hole was made just for me. <laughs> Don't climb in. Don't do it. All right. So our first um, showcase solve is by 42 Genius 42. Oh, this. this is the... Oh, hold on. <laughs> this is 18 R solve, I assume. <laughs> yeah. Let me put it back to normal here. Oh, without the, without the odd one out. <laughs> Yeah, so look how sweet and neat it looked until I hacked away at the center to reduce rate uh, to 16 from 18. So yeah, with it, this is without the odd one out. Um, uh, I see. I think this is actually oh, doing... The odd one out. I, I think this is actually doing maximally inefficient uh, pure projection because it's always um, projecting before purification. Ouch. Somebody got the memo backwards. <laughs> so I, I think this is the the highest rate you can have um, wasteless, I think. I mean, it, there's times it doesn't grab the input, though. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Interesting. I didn't notice that. But yeah, it definitely looks cool, the symmetry. And I guess it can't be completely symmetric because the product isn't uh, symmetric, but it's yeah. close enough. <clears throat> Next up, I believe this is a speed solve by Morconda. Nice. A long track. It's taking the approach of just making these and then. Yeah, projection only. Yeah. Optimize for convenience. Interestingly, um, I'm just trying to get into the mind of how other people do speed solves whenever I see the results of them, and this fits on a screen. 
which probably is smart for a speed song. <laughs> <laughs> The long track? Oh, this, the uh, seven, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then here's... Why is it even that long? Was it just dragged out and like... Yeah, maybe there's a plan. Not enough time to drag it back. There was a plan for it that was did not end up being used. Here's username void speed solve. Interesting that it pulls two in different directions. Oh, I guess this one is making... I see. So it's breaking it down into the spine and the... Uh, Bits ah. that gets put, put on there. And yeah, I guess with two of these, you can make this with some waste. And with two, or I guess six of these, you can make this with some waste. So. Or five of these? I don't, I don't know. I don't quite know. Oh, I'm looking at apparently never actually submitted my showcase. I submitted it as an ordinary solve and then didn't go back and resubmit it as showcase. So oh. you won't get to see it. Uh, oh. I might be able to pick it out from the list after we do the other showcases. Sure. If you, it would be what, a new solution one with 465 gold and uh, 32 rate. Okay. 465 gold. Yeah, it's not actually worth anything other than like being the first person to put a dot D in Discord saying, I finished the puzzle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, here, I guess I could just load it up now. Uh, what was the rate again? 32 rate and 465 gold. There we go. Yeah, this one. And this is a speed solve as well? Yeah. Nice. It was another projection only, but I'm just I'm trying to compare and contrast it for my own sake to the other speed solvers. Mm -hmm. So I, I made this eight cycle loop and then just spam repeated. <clears throat> right, yeah. And it's making all the pieces uniformly and then just breaking the triplex. That makes sense. I think I had an original. I, I, I built it mirrored accidentally at first. Mm -hmm. And so I lost a minute to that. But like, this is this is something you can build in like six minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's just like a fun way of playing that. The speed's off season. Let's look forward to it. Yeah. Good way to get introduced to the puzzle. And yeah, no, speed solves are not worth any points, uh, Igimo Jungle. So yeah, here we have the 25-4 solution. Used Just use 25 reagents to create four products. Interesting. So that's a 12.5R if you are at input speed instead of the 12.29R. I see. So I guess it's doing some sort of inefficient thing with this stuff. Oh yeah, it's uh, purifying iron to copper, which makes it slightly inefficient. It's cool that there's basically a wasteless way to get most fractions between min and min efficiency. Yeah, I'd be interested to see the like list of all the possibilities. When Shadow Cluster, I mean, so Shadow Cluster has made a program and I've seen pasted output of it where it says it's even for like cleaning up after in an area solve. Like, okay, I have this junk left on the board and I need to make an output out of this junk plus the number of inputs that it takes to make outputs mm -hmm. and gives all the paths for every, every possibility. It's really thorough. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And 
And another solve by 7T Storm Pistonless. No pistons because yes we can. I wonder if this is it's doing the same algorithm? Probably not. It's a lot less laggy, so. Oh yeah, I see. It's uh, purifying copper. I just went and changed all irrational guys in the previous CSVs into transcendental guys. Oh nice. Yeah, because then the scores will be kept consistent across the tournament. Yeah. And yeah, this is the last showcase solve. So thanks nice. for those submissions. And I wanted to make some questionable joke about a rational guy discovering E and then changing their name, but I'm not sure about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if he submitted any showcase solves, and then he needs to be considered complex transcendental guy <laughs> or something. Yeah, not this week. But yeah, now I guess I'll cover the final normal puzzle of the tournament, week seven, which is warp fuel. Oh, warp fuel. Quote unquote normal puzzle. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So we've got our same uh, friendly input here. Uh, ah, yes, friendly. <laughs> hope people aren't getting too tired of it, as well as a fire. And the goal is to produce this output. Any input I, that is over too high, I consider unfriendly. <laughs> But yeah, and the uh, metrics are cycles with a secondary of area and cost with a secondary of cycles. So, yeah. Um, hope everyone has fun with that one. I'll try. I don't have that much time this week, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, there was a poll for if people wanted to extend the tournament by an extra week to give this two weeks, but it seemed like the general feeling was no. And uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, probably for me too, it's uh, good to just wrap things up, you know? Yeah. But it's all time to end the tournament. Mm -hmm. And then after this, uh, there will be a computation puzzle, which should be fun. And i uh, Looking forward to it. Yeah, that'll come out Friday. But yeah, thanks uh, everyone for joining the stream, for submitting your um, solutions, and thanks to yeah, the thank for hosting. Yeah, thanks to the commentators uh, as well. Nice puzzle. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, I I was a little bit um, sad about how area was turning out, but it seems like most people got through it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> the only real mistake so far that <laughs> <laughs> in the tournament is that I would say. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thanks for uh, sticking through that uh, area stuff. Uh, Thank you for having us. Yeah. Take care. See y'all next week. <laughs>